On some unknown planet, the portal opens in the middle of a city, startling all the citizens. From the midst of this portal emerge old Goku and God Vegeta, landing in the place looking very confused and irritated. Darn it! I can't believe this is happening again! Vegeta complains. Oh man, I really wanted to win the tournament, Goku says, sounding a bit sad. A fruit is thrown in their direction, and it would have hit Vegeta in the head if he hadn't caught it. After grabbing the fruit, he crushes it with his hand while asking who threw it. The one who threw the fruit was a boy of that race, who is in tears as he looks at them. This boy curses them, recognizing them as Saiyans and calling them monsters. The other people around are also very frightened because of them, and they start running, shouting that the Saiyans are back. Goku asks what's going on. Vegeta understands the situation immediately and explains they have been probably transported to a reality where Saiyans were still alive, and it seems that they are carrying out their normal practices of planet invasion. This planet must be one of the ones that they invaded. But the curious thing is that this race is still alive. Vegeta says that whatever is happening in this planet is not their concern. He suggests that they go and find a way to understand what's happening to them, and they didn't have a chance to do so in the reality of their monkey versions. But suddenly they are attacked by an energy blast aimed at Goku, but he instinctively dodges it. The one who fires it was someone from a group of soldiers that has just arrived. This surprises Goku and Vegeta as these soldiers came very quickly. One of the soldiers who appears to be the leader of the group says they were already expecting the Saiyans to return, but after what happened last time, they didn't expect only two to come. Goku tries to talk to them and explain that things are not as they are thinking, but the group leader doesn't want to hear anything and orders the soldiers to fire. The men obey and start firing various energy lasers at Goku, who comically dodges the attacks while still trying to say, he is not an enemy, but Vegeta doesn't have that much patience, and he counters the soldier's attacks by firing a key sphere to hit the ground near them. And the explosion of the ground, while not killing the soldier, sends everyone flying. After that, Vegeta approaches the leader of the soldiers who is lying down and points his hand at him while threatening the guy not to try anything funny, or he'll send him flying. But despite the defeat, the soldier laughs and tells Vegeta that his goal was not to win but to distract them so the leader could arrive. Goku asks who this leader is, and the soldier replies that he's the same one who eliminated the Saiyans last time and is going to do the same with them now. Goku senses a very high power level approaching and alerts Vegeta. In the sky, a beam of energy tears through the air at incredibly high high speed, and then descends towards them, making a landing that despite being strong, does not damage the village's ground, indicating great care. But when Goku and Vegeta look at who this mysterious person is, they are absolutely shocked. Staring directly at the two Saiyans with his three eyes, Tien commands them to leave his planet immediately. It's only now that Goku and Vegeta notice that this alien race has three eyes, just like Tien, but they never imagined they would see him there. When Tien arrives, the people around cheer with excitement, applauding him greatly, and he tells the people to immediately move away from there, so they don't get hurt. Goku greets Tien and says he didn't expect to see him in a place like this. Don't you dare treat me with such familiarity, Saiyan. Tien responds to Goku with an expression of pure disgust. Goku asks what's wrong with him and why he's there instead of on Earth. Tien becomes even more irritated and angrily shouts at the Saiyan to stop talking, as if he knows him. Tien extends one of his hands and releases a surprisingly powerful wave of energy that impresses Goku and Vegeta greatly. Goku dodges the power wave and sees a huge part of the city behind him being destroyed. Destroyed. At first, Goku worries if someone died from that, but he realizes that the area was already empty, something Tien must have also noticed. Taking advantage of Goku's surprise and distraction from the energy attack, Tien advances towards him at an incredibly impressive speed and kicks Goku in the face. Surprised by his speed, Goku can only block it and is then sent flying by the attack. After pushing Goku away, Tien goes for Vegeta with a punch, but the Saiyan God catches it and also grabs Tien's other hand as he attempts to punch him. Vegeta starts squeezing Tien's hands very tightly, and the three eyed warrior begins to feel his hands being crushed and falls to his knees. Vegeta says that he is not as forgiving as Kakarot and anyone who dares to attack him will suffer the consequences. Tien recognizes that he is strong, much stronger than the others who came before, but he says that this alone won't be enough. Tien suddenly makes two extra arms appear from his back surprising Vegeta who didn't know he had that ability. Then using the two extra arms, he fires a point-blank range energy wave that sends Vegeta flying far away. Vegeta is carried by Tien's power wave out of the city where he collides with a mountain, and the entire mountain is shattered by the powerful explosion of the attack. Tien pursues Vegeta in a high-speed flight to attempt another attack, but Goku intervenes by appearing in front of him with instant transmission, and the three-eyed warrior wastes no time, starting a flurry of blows with Goku, who despite having to deal with two extra limbs of his opponent, manages to defend and dodge the attacks well. 
While fighting against Tien, trying more to defend than to attack, Goku tries to talk to him, saying that they are not enemies. To surprise Goku, he suddenly stops delivering physical blows and uses the Solar Flare. But Goku anticipates the attack when he sees the Solar Flare's position and protects his eyes, which surprises Tien, who wonders how he anticipated the attack since he had never used this technique against him or any other Saiyan before. But another surprise Tien has is when Vegeta shoots up like a rocket from the debris of the destroyed mountain, delivering a powerful punch to his abdomen. After this punch that destabilizes Tien, Vegeta gives another punch to his face, sending the protector of this planet crashing to the ground. Goku is very concerned and complains to Vegeta saying that he went too far with that blow. Vegeta is very angry and says he doesn't care about anything other than making this wretch pay for that attack. But to the surprise of both, Tien gets up even after those very powerful blows. He says that if the two of them think they had the numerical advantage, they are very mistaken. After saying that, he begins to create clones of himself using the quadruple technique. When he sees this technique, Goku tells Tien that this is not the best strategy to fight against them, as now that he has multiplied into four, his power has also been divided by four. Tien is very surprised when Goku says this and admits that he was very intelligent and perceptive in discovering the secret of his technique so quickly. Then he agrees with Goku and admits that this is a rather annoying weakness, but he has already figured out how to deal with it a long time ago. At that moment, Tien shouts, Kaioken times four. A vibrant red aura envelops Tien's four bodies, expanding his muscles. Goku is left wide-eyed when he sees this and asks when Tien learned the Kaioken. Vegeta says he's very clever because now all the clones have the same power as the original had before. But Tien says it's not over yet and then shouts Kaioken increase 10 times. Now all four clones are even stronger with their reddish auras increasing more than double and their bodies in addition to becoming more muscular take on a reddish hue as if the blood inside them flowed at an insane intensity. Goku is in shock saying that this is equivalent to Kaioken increased by 40 times. Tien says that now he will finish them in an instant. The four clones attack at the same time. Two advance against Goku and two advance against Vegeta. The exchange of blows is intense in the sky with Tien's powerful blows surprising Goku and Vegeta greatly who recognize that this guy is extremely more powerful than the Tien they know. But who is also surprised is Tien, who did not expect these Saiyans to respond to his attacks with the level of power he's using now. The planet sky is filled with shadows, shockwaves, and energy beams, while explosions resulting from the remnants of the battle spread around. To Tien's shock, it takes less than a minute of battle for him to start realizing his disadvantage. Against Goku, he realizes that even when attacking with full force and maximum speed, his blows simply do not reach him and are all thwarted by a successful dodge or defense by the Saiyan. And against Vegeta, the disadvantage is more noticeable as the Saiyan Hakaishin presses his two clones with very brutal attacks. In a matter of moments, the two clones of Tien who were facing Vegeta fall from the sky, defeated, and then disappear. Meanwhile, Goku faces the remaining two. Tien is very frustrated and while exerting himself to the maximum in his attacks, he asks how Goku can predict all his moves. Goku explains that he doesn't need to predict anything, just let his body react to the attacks. But even so, he can indeed roughly guess what Tien is going to do as he knows his movements very well. Tien says that this is ridiculous and there's no way Goku can know his movements since they don't even know each each other. Goku says that if Tien doesn't believe him, he can prove it. At that moment, he uses the Solar Flare, and the surprise is so great that Tien is caught by the technique and blinded. Goku takes advantage of this moment of blindness and lands a very precise blow on a vital point of his clone making the clone disappear. After that, he was about to deliver a blow that would defeat Tien as well, but to Goku's surprise, Tien dodges and counters with a very strong blow. Goku instinctively blocks the blow, but is thrown towards a rock. Tien takes advantage of this opportunity, and by joining his four hands at the same time, while concentrating all his power into a Kaioken increased by 50 times, he launches a powerful Kikoho. Goku is impressed by the power of this attack, but he decides to respond by firing an equally powerful Kamehameha against Tien's attack. The two power waves collide and at first they are evenly matched, but this does not hold, as Goku's Kamehameha immediately gains the advantage as he raises his key, and in an instant Tien can no longer keep up and dodges. But the problem is that when Tien dodges, the attack goes in the direction of the city, which he sees thanks to his keen vision of his third eye that is not completely evacuated. But Goku noticing that there were people in the city, teleports in front of the energy attack and then using his psychic power, redirects the attack upward causing it to exit the planet and get lost in the vacuum of space. After seeing that, Tien is very surprised because he didn't expect a Saiyan to care about saving the people on his planet. 
As he approaches, Goku praises him for that move, and asks curiously how he recovered so quickly from his solar flare. Tien, still keeping his two normal eyes closed and only his third eye open, says that this third eye is much more resilient than a regular eye. So he recovered more quickly. Vegeta approaches and asks if at least now Tien believes them. He says yes as he cancels his Kaioken, returning to his normal appearance and adds that the evil Saiyans he knows would never save people from his planet. Furthermore, it's very strange that Goku knows his ability so well, and for some reason he felt from the beginning of the fight that there was no bloodlust in them. After the battle ends, Tien takes Goku and Vegeta to a large mountain, which is where he lives, and there they have a more detailed conversation about what's happening. Goku and Vegeta discovered that in this reality, Tien was not born on planet Earth, but rather on this planet where all the inhabitants have three eyes just like him. He is the most powerful warrior on this planet, considered a true hero of his people. When Goku and Vegeta ask why Tien and the people of that planet hate Saiyans, he explains that not long ago an army of Saiyans invaded the planet and caused great chaos there, killing many people and destroying entire nations. Fortunately, he was more powerful than the Saiyans and managed to deal with them, but since there were many enemies, they managed to cause too much damage until he could eliminate that threat. Tien explains that Saiyans are very sinister warriors, feared and hated throughout the universe. According to what is said, the Saiyans' plan is simply to eradicate all races in the universe and build a universe where only they exist. Hearing this, Vegeta concludes that apparently the Saiyans in this reality are even worse than the Saiyans in their reality. Tien also mentions that this is not all. According to what they say, in some places, they invade. Saiyans simply corrupt the local people and turn them into beings as savage as themselves. Obviously, Goku and Vegeta find this very strange since they have never heard of such a thing. But suddenly, their conversation is interrupted when they see two beams of light falling from the sky, something that the three of them immediately recognize as Saiyan ships. The ships crash in an isolated region of the planet causing significant damage to the terrain. Emerging from these ships are two Saiyan warriors named Scarface and Shorty, who are immediately greeted by Tien, Goku, and Vegeta. Tien is slightly surprised to see only two Saiyans this time, as they were attacked by an army of them last time. But Goku and Vegeta looking closely at these guys deduce that they have a much higher power than the ordinary Saiyan. Tien also recognizes this but still realizes that they are not strong enough to defeat him. He tells these Saiyans to leave his planet immediately, or else they will suffer the same fate as the other Saiyans who attacked before. But Scarface and Shorty assure him that they are not like those idiots. They have a good look at Goku and Vegeta and recognize them as Saiyans. Then they ask what the hell they are doing in this place and on this guy's side. Goku responds that he doesn't have time to explain, but assures them that he and Vegeta are definitely not like them. They get angry with them and consider them as traitors. They say they will eliminate them as well. But Tien doesn't want to talk and charges at Scarface, kneeing him in the face, sending him to the ground. Shorty tries to react and attack, but the three-eyed warrior dodges his blow and counterattacks with a very fast sequence of punches that leaves Shorty confused. And he finishes the sequence with a punch that sends him to the ground, dragging him several meters along the ground due to the force. Scarface, already on his feet, extends his hand and fires an energy ball at Tien, but he stands still, makes a hand gesture, and then the Saiyan's attack stops when it reaches him and then it is launched back. Scarface dodges his own attack, but is hit by Tien's Dodonpa that comes right after hitting him square in the chest. Shorty approaches again, and he and Tien start exchanging several blows on the ground, and then rise into the skies. It doesn't take long for Scarface to also approach, and then Tien needs to exchange blows with both of them at the same time. He recognizes these guys as much stronger than the other Saiyans who invaded, because those others couldn't even resist one of his blows. Tien increases his power using Kaioken 10 times, and then lands a very strong strong punch that stuns Shorty and then proceeds to exchange blows only with Scarface, who is very pressured. Tien manages to stun and push Scarface away with a kick, and then he prepares an energy attack to launch at the Saiyan. But the problem is that Shorty comes from behind him and applies a very strong sleeper hold. Scarface takes advantage of this and advances with a concentrated attack that would probably kill Tien. But at that moment, he fires a laser from his third eye that surprises Scarface and hits him, knocking the Saiyan out of the sky. After that, he deals with Shorty's strangulation by making the two extra arms on his back appear, holding Shorty's head with his extra hands and then releasing energy from them, creating a small energy explosion in the Saiyan's head. Not enough to kill him, but enough to stun him and make him let go. After freeing himself from the strangulation, Tien goes behind Shorty and kicks him, sending him from the sky to the ground, on top of Scarface, who was just getting up. Afterward, Tien raises his power even more using Kaioken increased by 20 times, and joining his four hands, unleashes his double Kikoho, which hits the Saiyan duo head on. After this attack, Tien realizes that the enemies are no longer in a condition to fight despite still being alive, and then he reduces his key. 
Scarface and Shorty, despite their injuries and defeat, begin to laugh and say that this three-eyed guy is indeed as strong as they heard. Vegeta realizes that these guys have some tricks up their sleeves and tells Tien to finish them off. But before Tien can do that, they use a remote control to bring two glass containers from their ships. And in these containers, there is a strange red and black energy. As these containers approach, they break them with their hands, and then they are engulfed by the energy inside them. When this happens, the two Saiyans begin to emanate a very powerful energy aura. Goku, Vegeta, and Tien are very impressed with this because their power increase is absolutely insane, and the energy they are emitting is very evil and chaotic. Tien immediately uses Kaioken increased by 50 times and advances toward them, but Scarface interrupts his advance by moving in front of him so fast it seems like teleportation. Tien punches him, but Scarface grabs his hand, and in the simple act of holding Tien's hand, the energy simply begins to consume Tien as well. Tien starts screaming as the energy spreads throughout his body, and he begins to release power in a completely uncontrolled manner. Afterward, Tien turns to Goku and Vegeta and simply attacks them. His target is Vegeta, who when attacked, blocks Tien's blow. But when he does that, the strange energy begins to spread through his arm. But Vegeta uses his own power to disperse this energy from his arm. And when he starts dodging Tien's next attack, while shouting, for Goku not to let that touch him. Goku is attacked by Scarface and Shorty, who like Tien are completely unhinged. Goku dodges their attacks with great skill, avoiding being touched by that strange energy they are emitting. While dodging that blow, Goku asks whose energy they are using. But it's useless to ask because these guys have completely lost their sanity. At one point, Shorty tries to kick Goku, but at the last moment, Goku dodges and the kick hits Scarface, stunning him. Goku uses this chance to escape to Shorty's back and fires a point-blank range energy wave that hits both of them and carries them to a nearby mountain. After Goku's attack, the two of them faint. But to Goku's astonishment, when they faint, the evil power consuming them doesn't disappear, but instead completely destroys their bodies in an explosion. At that moment, Goku understands what happened. This energy is so aggressive that it is harmful to the body, and to manipulate it, the person being consumed needs to use their own power to avoid being destroyed. If the power of the person being consumed becomes too low, such as when they are unconscious, the body simply cannot resist. Goku shouts to Vegeta that they need to find a way to free Tien from this energy without knocking him out or letting Kaioken deplete too much of his energy. While dodging Tien's attacks, Vegeta deduces that if these guys simply had someone else's energy fused into them, then he has the right technique to deal with this problem. After thinking about it, Vegeta finally comes out of the defensive, dodging a final attack from Tien and then landing a punch squarely in his stomach. And when this punch hits, that evil energy simply detaches from Tien and moves away. This happens because in that blow, Vegeta used his technique called Force Spirit Fission. After taking Vegeta's punch, Tien returns to normal and kneels, trying to recover from the pain. But despite feeling the punch from Vegeta, he thanks him for freeing him from that, as being possessed by that power is worse than death. Goku approaches and asks Vegeta who could be behind such malevolent energy. Vegeta says he never heard of Saiyans involved in something like this, but he certainly wants to find out and know how to do it. Goku, who's obviously very curious as well, asks how. As they have this conversation, the malevolent energy moves away from the planet. Universe 8 On the Lakir's planet, which is completely devastated, the god of destruction of the 8th universe is extremely injured with bruises, burns, and cuts spread all over his body. Lakir is lying in the middle of a crater, which is clearly opened by his own body. A mysterious opponent approaches him slowly, and despite all his injuries, the god of destruction of Universe 8 struggles to get up. Weak? You're all so weak, the opponent says to him. What? Lakir asks, not believing what he's hearing. The mysterious enemy justifies his statement saying that when he faced Beerus, he thought he would have an equally interesting fight with the other Hakaishans. However, he was apparently mistaken. Lakir becomes very angry and then forms a keyblade in his hand as he advances against the opponent, shouting not to underestimate a god of destruction. But to the fox god shock, his blade is held by the opponent's bare hand. And then, with the other hand, the man simply disintegrates his body with a wave of power. After Lakir dies, the angel of his universe named Korn, who was watching everything from a high point on the planet, simply closes his eyes. While clapping his hands as if cleaning up dirt, the mysterious man complains about the low quality of his last opponents and about no one being as challenging as Beerus. But then he tries to be more understanding, saying in their defense that he is getting stronger with each fight. So it's understandable that things are getting easier. However, things getting easier doesn't mean they're getting 
getting more fun, and he wonders if somewhere there will be someone who will provide a challenge for him. At that moment, something catches his attention. It's that small portion of energy that was taken from Tian heading in the direction of this man. Surprised, he takes the energy in his hand, and it is immediately absorbed by him. As soon as he comes into contact with this energy that clearly belongs to him, the man comprehends what happened, as if the energy itself had told him. And at that moment, this mysterious man fills with excitement, unleashing his malevolent power as he says that maybe he, Kanba, the God Slayer, has found some amusement. Goku and Vegeta use instant transmission to a desolate region of space, but they did not expect that place to be empty. In fact, they were hoping that planet Vegeta would be there, as that is where the planet should be located. It was Vegeta who suggested this idea, intending to interrogate the Saiyans about that strange energy they saw the two Saiyans use on Tien's home planet in this reality. Goku tells Vegeta that it's very strange that planet Vegeta isn't there. Vegeta responds by saying that with all the strange things happening, that's the least weird. He deduces that if planet Vegeta isn't there, it's because it was destroyed by Frieza or in some other way in this reality. Or maybe it never existed. Goku says that if they can't talk to the Saiyans, then it's better for them to go to the Earth, where they might be able to gather more information or perhaps collect the Dragon Balls like they did in Wukong's reality. Vegeta agrees and they instantaneously transport to Earth. Luckily, planet Earth is still there and they end up appearing at Kamisama's lookout. When they appear, the one who sees them is Mr. Popo, who was taking care of the plants on the platform. Seeing them, Mr. Popo is very surprised and asks who they are and why they're invading this sacred place without permission. Goku tells tells Mr. Popo that they are Goku and Vegeta and asks if he doesn't recognize them. When Mr. Popo takes a closer look at Goku and Vegeta's faces, he recognizes them and is shocked. Goku and Vegeta are surprised by this and asked what's going on. Mr. Popo starts shouting for Kami-sama, saying that Kakarot and Vegeta have returned. Of course, Goku and Vegeta don't understand what's going on and ask him to calm down and explain what's happening. Mr. Popo says that they should be the ones explaining what's happening, as they should be dead. Dead? Goku and Vegeta ask. Yes, dead. Kami-sama killed you Saiyans many years ago. Mr. Popo replies. What? Don't be ridiculous, God Vegeta says. That old green decrypt man could never defeat me. Old green man? What are you talking about? Mr. Popo asks, surprising Goku and Vegeta. Suddenly from inside the temple, a voice that is very familiar to both of them echoes. Mr. Popo, there's no use wasting time with these two trash. No matter how they return, I will finish them off again. After saying that, this person leaps out of the temple and stands next to Mr. Popo. This person is Yamcha, or rather, God Yamcha. Goku and Vegeta are shocked. In this reality, Yamcha is a god. Yamcha tells the two of them that it doesn't matter how they returned, as the god of Earth will finish them off again. Before hearing any explanation, Yamcha advances against the two of them at an incredible speed and leaves Goku and Vegeta completely impressed. Impatient, Vegeta complains that people keep attacking them every time and it's wearing his patience thin. Vegeta attempts to land a punch on Yamcha, but to his complete surprise, Yamcha leaps over Vegeta's punch, grabs the collar of the god of destruction uniform from behind and tosses Vegeta into the air. After launching Vegeta into the air, Yamcha creates a Sokidan and hurls it at him. When the Sokidan hits Vegeta, it simply sticks to his body, and then Yamcha manipulates the energy spear along with Vegeta downward toward the planet's surface. Goku asks what he's doing, but to his utter shock, before he can even react, Yamcha's hand is touching his face. While holding Goku by the face, Yamcha starts carrying him, saying that they will fight without damaging the sacred place. Yamcha removes Goku from the platform and then simply tosses him down toward the planet. Both Goku and Vegeta fall toward the planet with Vegeta carried by the Sokidan, and Goku propelled by Kamisama's force. Almost simultaneously, they hit the ground with great force, raising a cloud of dust that can be seen from a great distance. When they get up, Vegeta asks what the hell is happening and how Yamcha can be so strong. The god of Earth lands near them and asks who wants to die first. Vegeta becomes furious, telling him to stop acting so superior. The god of destruction launches a powerful straight punch at the god of Earth. But to Vegeta's absolute surprise, Yamcha with complete calm and smooth movements simply dodges his punch, effortlessly dealing with Vegeta's attack as he passes right through and hits the tree behind them in a completely uncoordinated manner. When Goku sees this movement, he seems to understand what's happening, but simply can't believe it. Vegeta goes back at Yamcha even angrier, claiming that what he did was just luck. But Yamcha surprises him by intercepting his attack with a powerful kick right to the middle of Vegeta's stomach. 
sending him back to where he came from, and even further. After pushing Vegeta away, Yamcha quickly moves toward Goku, surprising him with an attack that Goku reflexively dodges, then counters Yamcha in an attempt to stun him and slow down his movements. However, the God of Earth smoothly evades the attack in a majestic manner to Goku's surprise, and then trips him with a graceful sweep. After knocking Goku to the ground, Yamcha leaps and fires a Kamehameha at him. But Goku manages to react quickly, getting up rapidly and using his psychic strength, extends his hand toward the Kamehameha and sends it back to Yamcha, who dodges it. Yamcha is very surprised that Goku avoided his attack in that way, since that energy should have been more than enough to finish him. Afterward, Vegeta returns, cursing Yamcha with great anger. God Yamcha is also also surprised to see Vegeta well, as he didn't hold back in the kick, and it should have been enough to kill Vegeta. After seeing that his recent attacks were insufficient to kill these two, Yamcha realizes that they are much stronger than he was expecting. Goku tries to start explaining things to Yamcha, but suddenly he senses something approaching from behind and turns to block. A very powerful kick hits Goku's arms, creating a massive shockwave that sends dozens of trees in the forest flying high. After defending against this attack, Goku sees who the attacker is. It's Krillin. Krillin compliments Goku saying he was very sharp in noticing his approach and also strong to be able to defend against that attack. Goku noticing that his arm is injured says that the blow was indeed very strong and that Krillin he knows could never have done that to him. Krillin joins Yamcha and explains that he noticed a battle was happening, so he came to help. Yamcha thanks Krillin for the assistance but says it's not necessary since he can handle these two weaklings. What did you just say, you worm? God Vegeta asks very furious. That's right, just as you heard. God Yamcha responds. And then he says that if before they didn't stand a chance, now with Krillin there, things are going to be much worse. Krillin tells Yamcha that apparently these guys are much stronger than regular people, but he can't stay in the fight for long because he has to go to work. So he suggests to Yamcha that they fight seriously right away and get it over with. Yamcha agrees, saying that there'll be no reason to delay. Suddenly, in the blink of an eye, Krillin and Yamcha transform, and the transformation they are using is none other than Ultra Instinct. Vegeta is in shock at this, wondering how on earth this can be possible. But Goku isn't as surprised as he noticed that the way Yamcha was avoiding their attacks wasn't normal. Without wasting any time, Krillin and Yamcha launched their attacks. Yamcha attacks Vegeta with a sequence of strikes, surprising Vegeta with very fast, precise, skilled, and powerful blows. But Vegeta also surprises Yamcha because he can handle the attacks, something Yamcha wasn't expecting. At one point, Vegeta counters with a blow that pushes Yamcha from the sky to the ground and tries to follow him to keep striking. However, as soon as he reaches the ground, the God of Earth surprises the God of Destruction by making a move where he falls to the ground, while simultaneously performing a pendulum movement and rises with a double kick to Vegeta's chest sending him flying backward. While Vegeta is in the desert, Yamcha pursues him to continue the attack, but Vegeta flips in the air and lands safely, immediately firing an energy ball at Yamcha, who stops his advance to dodge it. Vegeta seizes the opportunity to advance with more attacks. God Yamcha, using Ultra Instinct, can predict the movements of God Vegeta, dodging dozens of the Saiyan's God's attacks. But after several dodges, Yamcha counters with a quick punch, but Vegeta is agile enough to block it with his arms. After defending, he smiles at Yamcha while saying that from now on, he won't have the element of surprise to give him an advantage. Yamcha doesn't respond, but just stares at him with a serious expression. Meanwhile, Goku and Krillin exchange powerful, fast, and precise attacks in the air. Goku is very impressed with Krillin since he has truly mastered Ultra Instinct. Instinct. Goku says he never imagined that Krillin could become this powerful. But something that Goku is noticing is that Krillin seems a little sad as they fight. Goku asks what's going on with Krillin and he says that he seems a bit down. But Krillin gets irritated when he hears this question and tells Goku that he should know why. Krillin backs away from Goku and launches a sequence of Kianzans at him, which Goku dodges with various acrobatics in the air. When Krillin manipulates the discs back toward him, Goku responds by creating several Kianzans and launching them against Krillin's attacks. The discs collide and shatter. Krillin is very surprised by this and asks how Goku learned that technique. Goku responds that he obviously learned it from watching Krillin do it. Krillin says that Goku is very brave to want to learn the technique that killed him. Goku is surprised by this statement, but he doesn't have much time to be surprised because Krillin attacks him again, this time with more intensity. Goku asks Krillin why he killed him. 
Krillin gets irritated by this question and tells him to stop acting like an idiot, because he knows very well the reason. To get Krillin to talk, Goku invents a lie, saying that after he died, he lost some of his memories. Krillin believes what he said and then reminds him, saying that when he was on Earth, he claimed that they were best friends. And then he revealed himself as a Saiyan who came to destroy the entire human race and attacked him. With a clear sadness on his face, Krillin remembers how Goku, who was actually named Kakarot, tried to kill him in cold blood, saying that a Saiyan has no friends and that he was just one of his prey. Goku begins to understand what happened. He deduces that in this reality, he was indeed sent to Earth to destroy the planet and must have pretended to befriend the people of the planet to learn more about them and strengthen himself before launching the attack. After understanding the situation, Goku apologizes to Krillin, saying he's very sorry. But Krillin pretends to be detached, saying it's been a long time and he doesn't care, since he's not that sentimental young man anymore. But Goku realizes that things aren't like that and calls Krillin a liar. For a brief moment, Krillin lets his emotions take over, causing his ultra instinct to falter. It's during this brief moment that Goku seizes the opportunity to deliver a strong punch to the short guy's face, sending him plummeting from the sky to the ground. Krillin rubs his own face, even claiming to feel pain in his non-existent nose. It doesn't take long for Yamcha to fall near him, a fall that resulted from some attack that Vegeta launched against him. While rubbing his head, God Yamcha says that these guys are very strong. Krillin agrees and says they'll have to put in a lot of effort. Vegeta and Goku land near them. Vegeta is especially irritated and complains that he never imagined he would have to work so hard to beat the idiot Yamcha. God Yamcha hears this and asks what he's talking about since he was the one who killed Vegeta many years ago and his companion Nappa too. In fact, Yamcha asks why Nappa didn't come with them. Of course, Vegeta still doesn't understand anything, but Goku has a good grasp of the situation and explains to him that in this reality, he was sent to Earth to destroy the Earthlings, but he failed thanks to Krillin. So probably Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz came later to try to complete the mission. Kakarot couldn't, but they ended up being killed as well. Vegeta is a bit annoyed by this, saying it's depressing to think that he was defeated by Yamcha. God Yamcha says he doesn't like the way Vegeta is talking and then guarantees that from now on he will use his full power. Yamcha starts to concentrate the energy releasing an aura of power so intense that it makes the whole earth shake. Goku and Vegeta are impressed by the power he's unleashing as they didn't imagine he was even more powerful than he was demonstrating. Krillin says that from now on he won't let his past emotions interfere and then he also starts to release even more power. Yamcha and Krillin's energies are so intense that they cause various climate events to occur throughout the region and possibly the entire earth. Yamcha tells Krillin that they must finish their fight quickly or else the whole earth could be destroyed. Krillin agrees, but suddenly a shout that echoes throughout the region can be heard. Stop! The voice says. When they hear this voice, everyone knows who it is. Jumping out of the middle of the trees, the one who has just arrived lands near Yamcha and Krillin. Master Roshi? Goku explains, completely shocked and amazed. Indeed, it is Master Roshi, but he's young. Vegeta asks what's going on and how that old, decrepit man can look like this. Master Roshi speaks to Yamcha and Krillin, scolds them for releasing such a large amount of power because it could be dangerous for the Earth. They apologize, but justified by saying that these guys are really strong. Master Roshi doesn't accept this justification and says that he taught them a long time ago not to combat raw power with raw power but with technique. While turning to Goku and Vegeta, he says he will show his disciples how it's done. Vegeta is very irritated by this, releasing his destruction energy aura while pointing at Master Roshi and saying he's run out of patience. But before Goku could stop him, Vegeta lands a Hakai at Master Roshi in the form of a purple energy sphere. But Master Roshi, demonstrating absolutely incredible technical ability, touches the energy sphere from Vegeta in such a light manner that the spear doesn't explode in his hand. He then channels the energy smoothly and launches it back at Vegeta. Kakarot, dodge! Vegeta shouts as he and Goku see the attack coming back in their direction. A massive explosion occurs in the area, caused by Vegeta's Hakai, but fortunately both he and Goku escape with a jump. At an incredible speed, Master Roshi exits from where he is and appears in front of Goku, who in a reflex action tries to punch him, but his hand is captured by Master Roshi, who effortlessly manipulates it through his hand, and when Vegeta approaches, he launches Goku at him. Goku and Vegeta return together to attack Master Roshi, who surprises dodges the attack from both of them and in one of those dodges he makes Goku kick Vegeta and after Vegeta is stunned by Goku's blow Kame hits him with a wave of energy that sends him flying Goku continues to try to hit the master who dodges his attacks with unbelievable skill Goku already understands what's happening is this ultra instinct 
isn't it? And it's much more refined than Yamcha and Krillin's, Goku comments. Master Roshi confirms, although he's surprised that Goku knows this technique. He says that of course his Ultra Instinct is better than Krillin and Yamcha's because he was the one who taught them. Goku attempts a kick that Roshi defends by grabbing his leg and throwing him away, then dodges a low punch from Vegeta, who is coming with everything to finish him. Roshi dodges by performing a somersault over Vegeta and staying above him, fires an energy attack that puts Vegeta on the ground. After doing this, he moves away from the two. Goku approaches Vegeta, who is getting increasingly irritated. Vegeta has already figured out what's going on and asks Goku if this guy is using Ultra Instinct. Goku confirms his suspicions by saying yes, but he also mentions that it's not just that. Goku asserts that when it comes to skill and technique level, his Ultra Instinct is almost as precise as an angel's. Goku recalls that in the Tournament of Power, Master Roshi demonstrated an incredible level of technical skill in his movements, something that at the time strongly resembled Ultra Instinct. But it seems that in this reality, he can do it on a much higher level. Goku deduces that in this reality, Master Roshi developed his own Ultra Instinct on his own, without the help of an angel, and he passed this technique on to his students, who in this case are Yamcha and Krillin. After explaining this to Vegeta, Goku asks him to step back because he wants to face his master himself. Vegeta doesn't mind continuing, so he allows Goku to fight alone. After Vegeta steps back, Goku tells Master Roshi that he will be his opponent. With a rather unassuming attitude, Master Roshi says he could easily handle both of them. But if Goku prepares to lose more quickly by fighting alone, he has no problem with that. But Goku replies that things won't be as easy as Master Roshi thinks, because until now he was fighting without knowing his power. But now that he knows this, it won't be so easy. Master Roshi says that's what they'll see. And then he advances against Goku to attack. But his attack is dodged by Goku who counters with another attack that Roshi also dodges. Now a sequence of attacks and dodges begin, with each of them performing movements so fast and precise and fluid that the fight seems to become a deadly dance. Master Roshi can't help but notice the similarity in the way they're fighting and asks Goku how he learned those moves. Goku says it's a long story and he probably won't believe it if he told him. Then he asks how Master Roshi can look so young. Master Roshi replies by explaining that his old age was a big problem for developing new abilities and no matter how much he trained, his body always seemed to limit his development. So he started working on a rejuvenation technique and after many years of training, he gained such precise control over his key that he used it to reverse the aging damage to his cells. That way, he managed to make his body return to the peak of his youth. The result is that he is now a master with hundreds of years of experience and wisdom, but with the strength of a young man. Goku praises Master Roshi, saying he's amazing, but to Master Roshi's surprise, a kick hits his abdomen. This surprises the master who wonders how he was hit like this. And now attacking in a way that puts pressure on his master, Goku reveals that he also has a very high level of technical mastery of Ultra Instinct, and also he has greater overall power. Master Roshi says that if raw power is what he needs, then so be it. In a split second, Roshi drastically expands his musculature, blocking one of Goku's attacks and throwing a punch with a force that Goku wasn't expecting, hitting him and sending the Saiyan flying far into the sky. The blow was so powerful that Goku could only stop his moment in space. And after doing so, he returns to Master Roshi with instant transmission. Master Roshi is surprised that Goku resisted that punch so well, as it was a very strong attack. And Goku doesn't seem to have any major visible injuries. Goku praises the last attack, saying he didn't expect such a sudden and powerful strike. Master Roshi says he has much more where that came from. Gathering strength in his leg muscles, he launches himself at Goku with a low jump that looks like a swooping flight, it's so powerful. Goku dodges, letting Master Roshi pass right by, but he changes the course of his movement with another leap and returns toward Goku. He attacks with a series of blows, which Goku defends and dodges, then counters. But when Goku counterattacks, Master Roshi switches from his muscular form to his regular form, evading the blow and then returning to the larger form to deliver a powerful uppercut to Goku's chin, sending him into the air. Goku stops in midair and returns to face Master Roshi to continue their exchange of blows. Continuing the fight with frenetic movements, Goku comments that what Master Roshi is doing is incredible, switching so quickly to the smaller form to dodge attacks and then to the larger form to deliver more powerful strikes. He says that surely demands great control over Ki, but also a high level of mastery over one's own body. Master Roshi says he gained all the control over Ki due to many, many years of experience and training. But if it weren't for his youth, he wouldn't be able to switch between forms like this since it causes a lot of physical strain, something that an old man definitely definitely wouldn't endure. After giving more thought to the subject of youth and how Master Roshi achieved it, Goku asks him if it would have been easier to simply ask Shenron to become younger instead of spending so many years working on this technique. But Master Roshi doesn't know what he's talking about and asks who Shenron is. What? Goku
Goku exclaims. Then he asks if Master Roshi doesn't know about the Dragon Balls. Master Roshi says he has no idea what that is. Goku is so shocked that for a moment he becomes distracted and takes a punch to the face. He backs away rubbing his own face while asking how this can be possible. But then Goku remembers what happened when he and Vegeta arrived at the temple, and how Mr. Popo seemed not to know about a green Namekian Kami-sama. So he asks if the Earth's god was never an old green Namekian man. Yamcha answers that the Kami-sama before him had none of those characteristics. At this moment, Goku realizes that if Kami-sama was never a Namekian, it means there were never Dragon Balls on this Earth. Suddenly, something catches their attention. A beam of dark energy falls from the sky, hitting the forest with tremendous power causing a massive explosion. Seeing that energy, Goku and Vegeta immediately recognize it as the same energy that had taken over Tien and those two Saiyans on the other planet. After the explosion, a massive cloud of dust rises, and from that dust emerges a warrior. It's Kumba, the God Slayer. Seeing this man, Goku and Vegeta recognize him as an extremely dangerous opponent. Looking at them, Kumber says he was looking forward to meeting them. Looking at them, Kumber says he was looking forward to meeting them. Suddenly, Kumber rushes toward Vegeta, delivering a punch. Vegeta blocks the punch, and as soon as he feels Kumber's hand on his forearm, he realizes that his punch is very heavy. This guy is strong, Vegeta thinks, but he doesn't stand still and counterattacks with a punch that Kumber defends, clearly, also feeling the weight of his hand. Oh, very good, he comments. A series of punches begins with each clash of their fists, releasing strong electrical currents that spread through the area and even knocks down the trees in the surrounding forest. Krillin, Master Roshi, and God Yamcha wonder who the heck this guy is, who suddenly arrived with such an attitude. Looking closely at Cumber, they realize quickly by his appearance that he is a Saiyan, but they don't understand why he attacked Vegeta. Goku overhearing their conversation says that this guy is probably the leader of the evil Saiyans, and clarifies that he and Vegeta do not belong to that group. Vegeta lands a punch on Cumber's face, who tries to retaliate with another, but the God of Destruction ducks and hits his ribs with another punch, and then spins, delivering the kick to the face of the larger Saiyan. But Cumber retaliates with a very strong punch to Vegeta's chest, sending him flying. But shortly after, Vegeta manages to stop his forced motion in the air and then faces his opponent for a few moments. This guy is tough, he thinks. Cumber praises Vegeta saying that he moves very well and also has very tough attacks but believes that Vegeta can show much more. Vegeta asks how Cumber knows about him and Goku since he said he was looking forward to meeting them. Cumber says he saw what they did to his two soldiers, Shorty and Scarface, and wanted to meet them. Especially Vegeta who dresses like a god of destruction, but he doesn't know him. Cumber says he's very curious about them because they are clearly Saiyans, but they do not belong in his army and are much stronger than normal people. Vegeta asks who he is and how he has such evil energy. I am Cumber, the God Killer. And for you, that's enough information. Cumber moves toward Vegeta again, this time even faster, surprising the God of Destruction by appearing in front of him in the blink of an eye to deliver a kick. The target of the kick is Vegeta's ribs, which crack as they receive the attack. Groaning in pain, he notices that this guy's speed has increased dramatically out of nowhere. After receiving this very forceful kick, Vegeta tries to respond with a punch, but Cumber grabs his hand and pulls Vegeta down by the hand while delivering a knee to his face, stunning Vegeta and then landing a sequence of several punches, causing Vegeta's bones and muscles to vibrate from the impact of the blows. Vegeta retaliates with a punch to Cumber's abdomen, but he withstands the attack very well and responds with an elbow to Vegeta's face, once again destabilizing the God of Destruction, who now receives a sequence of kicks. Watching all of this, Goku can't believe that Vegeta is being pressured like this, and he concludes that this guy named Cumber is definitely no joke. After a well-applied sequence of kicks, Cumber spins and lands a punch right in Vegeta's chest, sending him flying. But these attacks only serve to enrage the God of Destruction, who launches himself at the evil Saiyan while letting out a war cry. He unleashed a powerful punch which Cumber narrowly dodged by leaning backward. Vegeta continued with a sequence of rapid and devastating blows, but Cumber proved to be agile, blocking each blow with precision. Cumber countered with a spinning kick that Vegeta managed to block with crossed arms. The force of the kick sent tremors through Vegeta's body, but he maintained his posture. In response, Vegeta unleashed his key with great power, pushing the evil saying away. Vegeta begins to emanate his destructive power while firing a sequence of key spheres at the enemy, which he dodges in the air and then responds with a torrential burst of energy toward the destroyer, who dodges and then counters with an energy slash that the evil Saiyan evades, causing a rock to split in half behind him, and responds with an energy globe that when the God of Destruction dodges, causes a huge portion of the terrain to disappear. Yamcha, Krillin, and Master Roshi are very concerned about this because if they continue at this rate, the Earth will be destroyed. Goku says that Vegeta won't allow that to happen, 
and they can rest assured about it. Two waves of power collide. Vegeta and Cumber engage in an energy clash, with the God Killer starting to gain ground, his energy advancing against Vegeta's at a considerable speed. It can't be that I'll lose in this, the God of Destruction exclaims. He raises his key with his purple aura intensifying. Starting to fall behind, Cumber also begins to raise his key, emitting an aura of transparent energy, thus equalizing the contest. The concentration of power at the center of the two energies is so great that it generates a massive explosion. So massive that it devastates the entire area. Seeing the massive explosion before them, everyone becomes very worried, including Goku, who says that Vegeta should have avoided that. But Vegeta is more concerned about something else. The intense exchange of attacks between him and Cumber that has just restarted, with both of them unleashing attacks at full throttle. Above them, the sky begins to darken, with clouds starting to release their electrical bursts in the form of lightning and thunder. The sound of thunder being drowned out only by the powerful shockwaves echoing throughout the arena. Cumber lands an attack on Vegeta that stuns him, but before he can land the next attack, a key sphere explodes right in his face. Then he tries to respond by also launching an energy sphere at Vegeta. But the Saiyan God dodges while advancing and delivers a powerful punch to the God Killer's abdomen, who manages manages to respond with a knee to the jaw of the God of Destruction, followed by a spinning kick to the abdomen and a point-blank energy blast that pushes Vegeta away. After receiving the energy blast, Vegeta immediately responds with a very powerful Hakai, released in the form of an energy sphere. Cumber dodges and the energy heads towards Earth. Seeing that Earth would be destroyed by the attack, Vegeta flies toward the energy sphere to prevent it from hitting the planet, but Cumber stomps him with a kick to the face. Fortunately, Goku is agile, teleporting himself in front of the destruction energy sphere and redirecting it upward with a kick, letting that sphere filled with contained destructive power explode in space. After doing this, Goku shouts at Vegeta to be more careful and asks him what's happening. While being cornered by a sequence of Cumber's attacks, Vegeta responds by saying that it's not easy to control himself while fighting this guy. Vegeta tries to land a punch on Cumber, but he grabs his arm, puts his hand on his chest, and unleashes a point-blank massive wave of power that sends Vegeta far away. Cumber was about to pursue Vegeta to continue the fight, but he is stopped by three energy waves launched at the same time, all of which he needs to dodge. Looking at the direction of where the attack came from, he saw that the culprits were Master Roshi, Krillin, and Yamcha. They say they won't allow these two to destroy the Earth. Cumber says that they, worms, shouldn't interfere. And then in the blink of an eye, he moves as fast as teleportation to the backs of the three. And before they could react, he points his hand at them and releases an aura of black energy that envelopes their bodies. Once enveloped by this power, the three start freaking out. Goku becomes very worried about this and shouts for his friends. Cumber orders them not to let Goku interfere further in the fight, and then the three go in Goku's direction to attack him. Goku starts dodging their attacks while futilely asking them to stop. Vegeta returns to Cumber, emanating even more power and fury, landing a very strong knee to his face. But Cumber grabs Vegeta's leg after the knee strike and throws him with force to the ground, shattering the ground as if it were glass. After that, he begins to punish Vegeta with multiple punches on the ground, filling his body with multiple attacks from his extremely heavy fists. And after a sequence of dozens of punches, Cumber steps away from the ground while attacking with dozens more key spheres, which explode all over Vegeta. But a larger explosion occurs, which is the explosion of destructive power caused by Vegeta emanating his power with even more fury. The Saiyan God advances against Cumber in a vertical flight, landing a very powerful punch to the larger Saiyan's jaw and then begins to pummel him with a barrage of very strong punches and kicks. You worm! Who do you think you are attacking me like this? The Saiyan Prince roars. Goku is in a tough spot dealing with the attacks from Krillin, Yamcha, and Master Roshi with all three Earthlings attacking him with all they have, completely berserk. Goku notices that their technical skills have greatly diminished because due to this madness that has taken over them, they are no longer using Ultra Instinct. But on the other hand, the raw power has grown significantly, just like what happened with those two Saiyans who attacked Tien's home planet. There's a moment when Master Roshi attacks Goku with a low blow which he dodges with a jump, and then Yamcha comes to catch him in mid-air with a flying kick. But Goku also dodges, stopping his jump and lying in the air, letting Yamcha pass right over him. And finally, Krillin leaps to attack him from above with a kick, which Goku also dodges by somersaulting in the air, letting Krillin pass straight by and hit the ground below. After distancing himself from the three, Goku reflects on the difficulty of his situation because if he knocks out the three, they will completely be destroyed by his evil energy, just like what happened with those two Saiyans. On the other hand, he can't just keep dodging forever. Goku shouts for Vegeta asking him to use Forced Spirit Fission again, just like they did to save Tien. 
Vegeta, who was punishing Cumber with an almost endless sequence of blows, hears Goku's request and finishes his combo with a downward kick to the top of Cumber's head, sending him crashing forcefully into the ground. After pushing the enemy away, Vegeta flies toward Goku and the others to help them, but to his surprise, Cumber has already recovered and returned to the sky, stopping in front of him. You bastard, get off my back, Vegeta shouts. Not yet, God of Destruction. I still have much to show. Cumber begins to unleash his power. This time, instead of the transparent energy aura, he starts to release his original power, the aura of black energy. Feeling the weight of that evil energy, Vegeta understands that this time, the enemy will use his true power, and then decides to respond in kind, raising his destructive key even higher, with both emitting strong electrical currents around their power auras. Vegeta asks Cumber who he is, where he came from, and what is this strange power he possesses. Cumber says he doesn't want to answer questions, he just wants to fight and kill. Cumber advances, but this time Vegeta advances to meet him. Vegeta attacks with the knee and Cumber with an elbow. Knee and elbow collide, generating a huge wave of impact and destruction. Then a flurry of blows comes from both sides, with each trying to overpower the other with extremely strong and violent sequences. The intensity of the battle increases with each passing second. Both Saiyans are determined to prove their superiority. Cumber increases his aggression, taking the lead over Vegeta in terms of the number of blows. His fists flew toward the Prince of Saiyans, who skillfully dodged the attacks and then countered with a barrage of precise strikes, now taking the lead in the number of attacks. But soon the two are in balance again, delivering an equal amount of equally violent blows. The impacts were deafening and created craters in the ground every time their fists met. Vegeta concentrates his power and releases a huge energy sphere towards Cumber. The attack is devastating, creating a shockwave that sweeps the surrounding area as it passes. Cumber reacts quickly, forming a barrier of energy in the shape of a wall to protect himself. Vegeta's energy sphere collides with Cumber's barrier, causing an explosion that illuminates the sky and generates more heat than the scorching sun of the afternoon itself. Cumber seizes the opportunity to launch himself at Vegeta again, this time with a series of precise punches and kicks. Vegeta defends himself with a mastery, blocking and dodging Cumber's blows, while launching his own quick and powerful attacks. The battle unfolds at high speed, with both Saiyans moving with impressive agility. They push their abilities to the limit, testing their strength and endurance. The Earth trembles under the impact of their attacks, and the battlefield is turning into a zone of destruction. Meanwhile, Goku tries to figure out how to deal with the three Earthlings who attack him with all they have. Goku realizes that Vegeta won't come to help him, so he needs to find a way to restrain the three without knocking them out. Krillin launches a Kienzen at Goku while Yamcha launches a Sokidan, and as Goku dodges, they manipulate the attacks back toward him. Goku manages to dodge the attacks somewhat easily, but he ends up being caught by Master Roshi's Bankoku Bikuri Shou technique. The electric wave released by the old master paralyzes Goku, who is electrocuted while watching Yamcha's Key Spear and Krillin's Destructo Disc approaching. Knowing that he couldn't receive those attacks, Goku releases his powers suddenly, dispersing the electric aura that paralyzed him, and then dodges both the Sokidan and Kienzan, which, coming from different directions, end up colliding with each other and self-destructing. After missing these attacks, the three decide to join forces and unleash a powerful Kamehameha trio against Goku, who responds with a Kamehameha of his own. Cumber falls forcefully to the ground after receiving some attack from Vegeta, but the Saiyan God wants more and descends from the sky, landing on the evil Saiyan and pummeling his face with furious punches. While pummeling his enemy, Vegeta says he is going to make him pay for all those blows. But Cumber throws Vegeta into the air, releasing an aura of power, and then launches a series of energy attacks that send Vegeta back into the sky with multiple small explosions. Then Cumber catches the God of Destruction in the air with a very powerful knee to his stomach followed by an elbow to his back that makes Vegeta spew his divine blood. But the destroyer doesn't let it go, retaliating also with an elbow, but encumbers neck, causing him to recoil without air. But the god killer becomes even more breathless after receiving a precise punch to his stomach, and then another direct punch that crushes his lungs. With his hands over his extremely painful chest, Cumber retreats in the air, vomiting his own blood. Vegeta advances against him, preparing another punch and saying it's not over yet. But to Vegeta's surprise, the enemy, who was previously cornered in pain, suddenly charges at him, intercepting his punch with a kick to the face. And then he begins to carry Vegeta through the sky with a series of extremely powerful and devastating punches. How can it be? This guy is getting stronger and stronger, Vegeta exclaims in his thoughts. 
The Kamehameha Showdown continues, with Goku maintaining a balance with the three Earthlings. Goku could end this confrontation by raising his power, but instead he decides to keep the contest going. Even as Master Roshi, Krillin and God Yamcha exert themselves to try to overcome him, increasing their powers and spending more and more energy. While maintaining the contest, Goku focuses on the three of them as if he's waiting for something. After a while, Goku notices something and apparently what he was waiting for happens. He suddenly increases his key, causing his Kamehameha to simply overpower the attack of the three. Losing the contest, they have no choice but to dodge, but this is when Goku teleports behind them, and then creating his key avatar, he grabs all three with the giant hands of the avatar. Caught by the giant, they begin to struggle to break free, but Goku concentrates to hold them firmly with his energy projection. Goku's plan was to make them waste energy with the Kamehameha, thus weakening them to the point where he can contain them with his technique. And in this way, he doesn't have to exert so much effort to dodge their attacks. However, this plan is not perfect, as they will continue to emit energy to break free. Goku looks at Vegeta and hope he ends the fight soon, or else the three will die. Vegeta is launched onto a boulder, his body sinking into the rocks. Then an energy shot hits him and then completely destroys the entire rock in an explosion that takes the form of an energy pillar. But Vegeta emerges from the energy, advancing to attack. He is not shaken by the attack. On the contrary, he now emits even more power. Vegeta's punch lands forcefully on Cumber's face, unsettling the balance of the evil Saiyan. But Cumber also responds with a punch to Vegeta's face, which he withstands better. And finally, both simultaneously punch each other in the face, but Cumber staggers back while Vegeta stands firm. Even out of breath, Vegeta smiles and taunts Cumber, saying that no matter how hard he tries, his power is greater. Cumber laughs at this and tells Vegeta not to underestimate him, as he has many tricks up his sleeve. Cumber quickly forms an artificial moon in his hand and launches it into the sky. When Vegeta sees the moon, he becomes very irritated, as he had forgotten about this detail. But even though he could destroy the moon before Cumber transforms, Vegeta decides not to do so. Goku complains about this, as Vegeta needs to finish this fight quickly to help Master Roshi, Krillin, and Yama but Vegeta replies that he is not a coward and wants to face this guy, giving it his all. In no time, Cumber transforms into a giant ape, becoming an Uzaru. Even in his gigantic form, he disappears from Vegeta's view like lightning and reappears behind him, attempting a crushing punch. But Vegeta, aware of the speed increase, escapes the attack with a lateral flight and fires a key blast at Cumber's face, which he deflects with a punch and returns fire with an energy blast from his mouth, which God Vegeta dodges to respond with a punch, only to be countered by another of Cumber's punches. The giant and the small one engage in a very peculiar exchange of blows, where curiously, the giant has a speed equal to the small one, and the small one has a strength equal to the giant. Goku watches this battle very anxiously. He looks at the two fighters, and then at the three earthlings who are trying their best to break free from his energy avatar. Goku realizes that their energy is depleting faster and faster, and if this continues, their bodies will soon be destroyed. Cumber manages to land a devastating blow on Vegeta, hitting him with both hands as if he were a fly. After that, he delivers a punch from a Above, like hammering a nail, with Vegeta being the nail and Vegeta is sent crashing into the ground. Finally, the God Killer steps on the God as if this divinity were just an ant. But using his absolutely insane strength, Vegeta lifts the giant's foot, emitting an absurd amount of power. Vegeta manages to escape from under the giant's foot and approaches him with a direct uppercut to the chin, stunning the titan. After the first punch, Vegeta unleashes a sequence of attacks on Uzaru Cumber, making the gigantic being surprisingly retreat before his blows. How? How does your power keep growing? Cumber asks, impressed. You haven't seen anything yet, Vegeta replies. The Saiyan God stops the sequence of blows, and stepping back from Cumber begins to concentrate a high amount of power while saying, It's time to end this. Final Hakai. Vegeta unleashes his attack, charged with the power of destruction. But Cumber doesn't stand still. He responds with a powerful energy torrent launched from his mouth. The powers collide. However, the advantage of the destroyer is clear, and Uzaru's defeat seems certain. However, Cumber shouts, Kaioken increased 100 times! To Goku and Vegeta's complete shock, a massive crimson aura envelops Cumber's titanic body, while his energy wave gains an abyssal volume. Faced with this massive power increase from Cumber, Vegeta begins to lose ground with his attack, retreating more and more as he wonders how this is possible. Goku also can't believe what he's seen, and he can only deduce that Cumber copied Tien's Kaioken when he was dominated by the evil energy, but because his body is stronger, he can elevate his power even more than Tien. Goku shouts to Vegeta that he has to use Shinken now, or he will die. Vegeta, seeing that he had no option, begins to emanate his power. However, Kanba notices that it is a very different power, an energy that not even among the gods he has felt. At this moment, Vegeta's body transforms, revealing a form that when Cumber sees it, 
becomes simply mesmerized. And then Vegeta screams, releasing his power and his energy, which had been completely subdued, simply starts to engulf the energy's energy, destroying that wave of power as it advances over it. In a fraction of seconds, all that majestic wave of Cumber's power disappears, and faced with a massive destruction power coming toward him, even this gigantic being shrinks like a child. To his surprise, Vegeta dissipates the energy. However, this is not a sign of mercy, as in the next second, the God of Destruction pierces Cumber's chest with his body. Faced with this mortal wound, he reverts to his base form and falls to the ground defeated. After Cumber falls, Vegeta lands nearby, praising him for making him resort to this form. Cumber asks what kind of power this is and says he's never seen anything like it. Vegeta says this is Shinken, something that, to put it simply, is his ultimate form. Shinken, Cumber repeats, what an interesting power. Extending his hand to Cumber, Vegeta says he didn't let that energy attack destroy him, because the explosion would have destroyed the Earth along with it, but now he won't have an escape. But at this point, Cumber says it would be great to have Vegeta on his side. At this moment, a small cloud of Cumber's evil power that had detached from his body advances towards Vegeta, surrounding his body completely in a millisecond. Goku shouts in concern for Vegeta, who starts screaming as the evil energy around him begins to simply enter his body. While starting to laugh, Cumber says that this pure evil power will take over his body and make him a slave. Vegeta falls to his knees, feeling very unwell as he tries to resist it. Goku is extremely worried and asks if Vegeta is okay, but after a while he stops breathing and screaming, and then he stands up, looking at Goku. His gaze is filled with malice, and a wicked smile escapes the God of Destruction's mouth. Oh no, Goku exclaims. Things couldn't be worse. Cumber began laughing as he struggled to get up with his hands over his chest, which had been pierced by Vegeta while he was still in Uzaru form. Cumber told Goku that the more malice a person has in their heart, the harder it is to resist his malevolent power. For gods of destruction, it's nearly irresistible, since these deities harbor a lot of malevolence within them. But then something unexpected happens. Vegeta began emitting his destructive power intensely while straining. In just a few seconds, Cumber's malevolent energy that had entered his body through the skin started to be expelled. As it left Vegeta's skin, the malevolent energy simply vanished, as if being destroyed by Hakai. Cumber was in shock when he saw this and asked how the heck this was happening. Vegeta, after expelling the malevolent energy of the other Saiyan, said that his mastery of Hakai was so high that he simply destroyed Cumber's malevolent energy that had infiltrated his body, and he managed to do it without harming his own body. Impossible. How can someone have such mastery over such a voracious power? Cumber asked in great disbelief. Simple. That's Shinken, Vegeta replied, as he extended his hand toward him, then shouted, Hakai. As the evil Saiyan screamed in agony, his body began to disappear until there was nothing left. Once Cumber was destroyed, the malevolent energy that had taken over Master Roshi, Krillin, and Yamcha simply dissipated. They were freed from that energy. The Earthlings were greatly relieved, saying that being dominated by that power was the worst thing they had ever experienced. Seeing that they returned back to normal, Goku dispelled his key avatar, setting them free. Afterward, he said that they must have realized that he and Vegeta were not evil, and then asked if they could talk things over now. Meanwhile, four auras of malevolent energy left planet Earth. In Universe 6, Champa was badly injured, running from someone. He clearly participated in a very intense battle and came out worse for wear. He ran up to Vados and knelt before her, holding onto the angel's clothing, begging for help. But Vados replied that she couldn't help him right now and mentioned that he should have taken his training and diet more seriously. Champa began pleading for help, but suddenly an energy attack pierced him from his back to his chest, and then the Hakaishin fell dead. The author of this attack is Cumber, who said disappointingly that this god of destruction was the most disappointing of all, as he expected more from the brother of the great Beerus. Vado says that in the past, Champa wasn't like this. He was a genuinely respectable warrior, but that changed over time. A cloud of his malevolent energy approaches Cumber, and when this energy reattaches to his body, he begins to have a vision of everything that happened on planet Earth. This energy was released by Cumber shortly after Vegeta freed himself from his malevolent power. Realizing he would be destroyed, Cumber released some of his energy without Goku and Vegeta noticing. After understanding everything that happened on planet Earth, Cumber becomes extremely excited to know that his clone was defeated by Vegeta, and says that he has finally found worthy opponents. Thrilled to discover this, he starts releasing a tremendous amount of power while letting out a loud laugh. Vados can't help but notice that Cumber's power suddenly increased, and he explains that the good thing about being a Saiyan is that when you recover from a mortal wound, your power increases dramatically. And thanks to Vegeta, he's even stronger now. But Cumber says it wasn't just Vegeta who helped him. Those three Earthlings who possess that very useful technique called Ultra Instinct will also be of great help. When he says this, another cloud of energy reaches him and merges with his body, and now Cumber also has Ultra Instinct. In Universe 4, another clone of Cumber is in a battle against Quitella, and this clone is getting the worst of it. 
As he is kneeling while Quitella is flying toward him, ready to deliver a punch that would be his final attack. But suddenly, a cloud of energy reaches Cumber and fuses with his body, and at that moment he majestically dodges Quitella's attack. Evading the Universe 4 God of Destruction going behind him and piercing his arm through Quitella's back and chest. The rat deity is completely shocked and asks how he managed to do that, as only an angel could dodge an attack like that. Cumber corrects Quitella saying that actually, the ones who could dodge like that are only an angel, some earthlings, and now him. In Universe 12, Cumber has his hand around the neck of the God of Destruction, Jin, who curses him. When the fourth cloud of energy reaches him, this Cumber becomes ecstatic with power, and then simply breaks the neck of Universe 12's God of Destruction while laughing and emanating his power. He thanks Tien for his cloning technique, as now he can fight various battles and become stronger through all of them. Treating Jin like trash, Cumber tosses the dead god to the ground and says that next time he'll go see Goku and Vegeta with his original self, but before that he'll discover the origins of those two. Back on Earth, after Krillin, Master Roshi and Yamcha realized that Goku and Vegeta were not bad guys as they had thought, they decided to have a better conversation with them. Since Goku complained about being very hungry, Yamcha had the idea to take him to the home of the person he knows is the best cook, Chi Chi. But to Goku's absolute surprise, in this reality, Chi Chi is Yamcha's wife. Goku's very shocked when he learns this, and Vegeta laughs at him because now he knows what it's like to have Yamcha steal his wife, just like what happened to him in the first alternate reality they were in. But this time Yamcha went even further. Further. He not only stole Goku's wife but also his entire family. In this reality, Gohan is Yamcha's son and he has Videl and Pan as his daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Everyone was gathered at Chi Chi's house for a family lunch, but the one not expected to be at this family reunion was Yamcha himself, who apparently chose to live separately from his wife to become the god of Earth. Vegeta feels a little sorry for Chi Chi since it seems that in any reality, she is abandoned by her husband. Vegeta is curious about Balma and asks what she's like in this reality. Krillin says she's a great friend to all of them. In this reality, she is the CEO of Capsule Corporation, and despite being a very beautiful and successful successful woman, she couldn't find a husband. Even though he's a bit selfish, Vegeta is happy about this because at least in this reality, no one has taken his wife. Goku and Vegeta end up being invited to eat, and while they eat, they have a better conversation and learn more about this reality. In this world, Gohan, despite being a warrior with great potential, chose to leave the fate of Earth in his father, Yamcha's hands, and continued his life normally as a researcher. Yamcha ended up marrying Chi Chi and then had Gohan, but when the god of Earth needed to leave, he took over the role and went to live on the Kami's lookout. But in this world, for some reason, the god of Earth was never a Namekian, and therefore, they never heard of the Dragon Balls. Vegeta suggests that in that case, he and Goku should go to Namek to use the Dragon Balls there, but Goku says they can do that later, and that for now, they can just relax and eat a bit. Vegeta eventually agrees, unlike Goku, he is no longer a mortal and therefore no longer needs to eat. But as a good Saiyan, he still takes great pleasure in eating. On planet Namek, life among the Namekians seems very peaceful, then suddenly, the Grand Elder Guru senses a completely horrible sensation, and tells his guardian, Nail, that something very bad is about to happen, and a great evil is approaching. This obviously leaves Nail extremely worried. Cumber the God Killer approaches at full speed, entering the planet like a meteor. He descends from the sky straight into the Grand Elder's house, destroying the roof of the Namekian leader and standing in front of his throne. Both Nail and the old Namekian are very surprised and scared by this. Nail wants to attack the intruder immediately, but the Grand Elder tells him not to act so hastily and says they should wait and hear what Cumber wants to say. Cumber greets them in a very sarcastic way and says in a threatening tone that the Elder Guru is a very wise man, since if Neil attacked him, he would tear his bodyguard apart like a worm. This leaves Nail quite irritated, but out of respect for the Guru, he doesn't say or do anything. Cumber asks if the Grand Elder knows who he is, and the wise Namekian replies that not exactly, but he knows that Cumber is a Saiyan, and he also knows that Saiyans are spreading great evil throughout the universe. Cumber says that if he has an idea of who he is, he should definitely have an idea that it's better not to defy what he says. The old Namekian asks what he wants, and Cumber says he wants to use the Dragon Balls to find out something about two men who recently appeared in the universe. The the Grand Guru asks that if Cumber knows about the powers of the Dragon Balls, why have the Saiyans never attacked this planet before? Cumber responds by saying that he knows that on this planet there is a very powerful protector, and so far he has avoided messing with that guy. Also, he hasn't needed to use these Dragon Balls until now. The Guru says that if Cumber knows the least about the Namekians, then he certainly knows that they won't hand over the Dragon Balls to be used in such a frivolous way, especially by a bad guy like him. Cumber says that if he doesn't want to hand over the orbs for good, he can take them without any problems. While saying this, he points his hand at the Guru, but the old Namekian says that if Cumber kills him, the Dragon Balls will stop working. 
and all of this will have been in vain. However, Cumber says he knows that and that he doesn't intend to kill the Guru, but rather all the other Namekians on the planet. And he'll start with his bodyguard. Cumber turns his hand toward Nail and fires an energy beam at him. But to the Saiyan's surprise, the Namekian deflects his attack with a strike, causing the energy to destroy one of the walls of the house and fly away. Afterward, Nail extends his arm to reach Cumber with a punch right in the chest, making him destroy another wall and be thrown out of the Grand Elder's house, landing several meters away. Following this, Nail leaves the house and approaches Cumber, who's getting up from the ground. Cumber is quite surprised and admits that he didn't expect Nail to be able to counter his attack like that. Nail responds by saying that he is the most powerful mortal warrior on this planet and won't be defeated so easily. But Cumber is not sad about it. On the contrary, he's happy that he will get to fight a little. Cumber advances against Nail with a flying kick that the Namekian defends, but ends up getting knocked to the ground by the force of the kick. After that, Cumber tries to hit him on the ground with a punch, but Nail surprises him by shooting an energy blast from his mouth straight into the Saiyan's face, making him recoil. Nail then attacks with a direct kick to Cumber's abdomen, which Cumber resists well, grabs Nail's leg and spins him several times, and then throws him into a rock which shatters upon impact. Nail emerges from the rubble to attack Cumber with everything he's got, and the Saiyan goes toward him. When the two collide, Cumber wins the struggle by carrying Nail through the air and crashing into a mountain with him. Burying the Namekian in the rocks, the Saiyan punishes him with a sequence of punches, and these punches are so strong that the warrior's evil fist starts sinking the skin of the Grand Guru's protector with each impact. After that, he grabs one of Nail's arms while stepping on his face and then pulls the Namekian's arms off his body, making Nail scream in pain. Afterward, Cumber grabs the other arm and rips it off as well. Removing both of Nail's arms, he grabs the strongest mortal of Namek by the neck and begins to strangle him. He praises Nail because he is undoubtedly a very powerful guy, but unfortunately he is far from being an opponent for him. But Nail says it's not over yet, and then he makes two arms regenerate and stretches them to grab Cumber. While holding the Saiyan in a tight grip, Nail starts accumulating a very large amount of power, saying that if he can't defeat Cumber and stay alive, at least he'll defeat him by dying. Nail self-destructs in a massive explosion. Realizing what just happened, the Grand Guru mourns for his guardian. When the explosion ends, Nail has been completely reduced to pieces, with no trace of his body remaining. But Cumber, on the other hand, is completely intact, with only very minor injuries on his body. Even with his opponent already dead, he praises Nail, saying that he was a worthy warrior, despite having a completely useless death. But at that moment, someone appears behind him saying that Nail's death was not in vain, as he fulfilled his task well, which was to protect the Grand Guru and the rest of the people until he arrived. Cumber takes a good look at the newcomer, and that person is Piccolo. Cumber recognizes him, saying that he must be the supreme protector of this planet, Piccolo the Namekian god. Piccolo confirms what Cumber just said and asks how he knows of his existence. Cumber says that the Namekian god is a legend among the gods, since even the gods of destruction fear him, the one known to be the heir to part of the great Zalama's power. Cumber says that the Namekian god is undoubtedly one of the most feared deities among all the universes and is known to have completely extraordinary power. Piccolo says that if Cumber knows all this, he should have thought twice before coming to this planet. Oh, I thought much more than twice, believe me. He replies to Piccolo and then says that he wanted to go to Namek and steal their Dragon Balls for a long time, but he never felt prepared to face the great Namekian god, at least not until now. Piccolo asks why he waited until now and what changed. Cumber says that he simply feels ready for this challenge now. Cumber advances in the blink of an eye against Piccolo to land a punch, and Piccolo responds to this punch with an elbow strike. When hand and elbow collide, suddenly Cumber perceives a change in the reality around them and wonders what's happening. Piccolo takes advantage of this moment of surprise to move behind the Saiyan, grab him by the hair and deliver a strong knee to his back. After doing that, he tosses Cumber into the air, extends his hand toward him, and releases a power sphere that upon impact creates a massive explosion in the Namek sky. But to Piccolo's surprise, Cumber appears behind him to attempt a strike. But Piccolo, despite the surprise, reacts well to the elbow by turning to grab the Saiyan's hand. Cumber, very curious, asks what he did just now with the reality around them. Piccolo responds by saying that he used his magical powers to take them to a parallel dimension inside the planet so that their fight wouldn't damage the real version of the planet. Very well, the Saiyan praises. But it's Piccolo's turn to ask a question. And his question is how Cumber escaped unscathed from that explosion. Cumber answers that he recently learned a very interesting ability called Ultra Instinct. And now hitting him won't be that simple. 
Cumber makes Piccolo release his hand by attempting a kick that the Namekian dodges by crouching down and then tries an upward punch against the Saiyan, who escapes the blow by performing a backflip and then returning with a flying kick against Piccolo, who dodges it with a jump, and then throws his turban at Cumber, who, when he grabs the turban, is simply thrown to the ground by its weight. What? Was he fighting with all that weight? The Saiyan wonders, impressed. Piccolo descends from his jump, attempting to stomp on Cumber, who rolls to the side to escape and then gets up, trying to hit Piccolo with an energy blast. Piccolo dodges to the side, but then has to deal with a punch from Cumber, who advances towards him. Piccolo disappears in the blink of an eye, leaving only his cape for Cumber to punch. After that, he reappears behind the evil Saiyan attempting a head kick, but Cumber also manages to evade by crouching. Then the two begin an exchange of blows where Piccolo starts to feel at a disadvantage and begins to be cornered by the Saiyan strikes, until he's finally hit by one of his blows and backs away. Piccolo gets a bit irritated, complaining that it's somewhat difficult to hit Cumber because of this so-called Ultra Instinct ability. Cumber asks if that's all Piccolo has got and mentions that he was expecting more from the great Namekian god. But Piccolo smiles and says that this is just the beginning. Piccolo concentrates his power, unlocking his potential, losing the striations on his body at the same time that his musculature becomes slightly denser. After unlocking the potential of his body, he attacks Cumber again. And now the Saiyan realizes that the strength and speed of the Namekian god has improved considerably. Piccolo manages to land a blow that pushes Cumber away, and then he launches several energy balls at him from which Cumber manages to dodge thanks to Ultra Instinct, performing various acrobatics and moving frantically both in the air and on the ground. But before Cumber could realize it, he was getting surrounded by Piccolo's power shots. Then he joined his arms while causing all those energy spears to hit Cumber in the center, creating a huge explosion. But this time was also thwarted as the leader of the evil Saiyan successfully defended himself by creating an energy dome around him. After that, they meet again in the air, restarting an intense exchange of punches and kicks. At one point, Piccolo is pushed back by an elbow strike from Cumber, but he reacts in the same second by concentrating energy in his hand and firing an energy beam at Cumber, who skillfully evades it and responds with a sequence of rapid attacks, launching several energy orbs from which Piccolo dodges, but one of the orbs exploded near him, creating a smoke cloud that obscured his vision. Cumber sees the opportunity and emerge from the smoke, throwing a powerful punch towards Piccolo. Piccolo managed to block the blow with his forearms, but the force of the attack pushed him back, creating a crater in the ground. But he quickly regained his composure. You're strong, but you won't defeat me so easily, said Piccolo, his voice full of determination. Piccolo concentrated his energy again, this time creating multiple energy spheres around him. He fired them at Cumber in a rapid burst of shots. Cumber reacted with quick movements, dodging each shot. Cumber then focused. His eyes glowed with an intense red aura as he fired a wave of energy towards Piccolo. But the Namekian god responded with a powerful Mukan Kasapo that simply pierced through Cumber's attack and went in his direction. Thanks to the agile reflexes of Ultra Instinct, he dodged, but not without receiving a grazing cut on his arm. Cumber praised the great power of the Namekian god, but said that he is also far from using his full power. The evil Saiyan created an artificial moon and launched it into the sky, then transformed into the Great Ape. This surprised Piccolo, who was even more surprised by the great speed of that giant beam, which simply charged towards him at such a high speed that he couldn't react, and grabbed him in one of his hands, starting a very violent crushing. Cumber started to laugh and said that he's going to turn the great Namekian god into mush. But Piccolo said that not even in his wildest dreams that will happen. And then he unleashed his power in a completely surprising way, in a massive pillar of massive energy. Cumber was instantly pushed away by the pressure of this power. From this great pillar of energy, Piccolo revealed himself again, this time in his orange form, displaying exuberant muscles and an extremely threatening expression. After doing this, Piccolo said that if Cumber thinks he's special for being able to become giant, he better think again. The Namekian god begins to expand his size, instantly becoming as gigantic as the Great Ape. After that, the two crashes, starting an intense exchange of blows, releasing shockwaves and power all around. Piccolo and Cumber's colossal attack shake the ground, creating huge craters with each strike. Cumber roars in fury as he charges at Piccolo. He tries to crush the Namekian god with his powerful fists, but Piccolo is far from an easy target. Piccolo skillfully dodges Cumber's brutal attacks using his agility and intelligence. But hitting Cumber was not easy either because despite his monstrous size and beastly appearance, he retains his consciousness and the abilities of Ultra Instinct. 
With a monstrous roar echoing through the surroundings, Cumber tries to use his giant tail as a whip to catch Piccolo off guard. Piccolo was alert and blocked the tail attack with his arm, but the tail wraps around the Namekian's arm and then Cumber advances with an attack that Piccolo probably wouldn't be able to defend. But using his eyes, he fires an energy laser right in the middle of the giant monkey's chest, causing him to release his arm and stop the attack he was about to make. Piccolo takes advantage of this opening and charges at Cumber, bombarding him with a flurry of punches to the face, stunning the Ozaru. Realizing that his power was greatly inferior to his opponents, Cumber shouts Kaioken, multiplying his power by a hundred times. With a red aura surrounding his titanic body, he manages to balance things out a bit better with Piccolo, and the two engage in a balanced exchange of blows. At one point, Piccolo holds back one of Cumber's punches, and Cumber also holds back one of Piccolo's punches. With both of them locked in a hand-to-hand -hand struggle, Cumber decides to resort to a powerful energy blast fired from his mouth. But Piccolo responds in kind, also launching a massive wave of power from his mouth. The attack collides between their faces and the next moment, a completely gigantic explosion occurs. Back on Earth, Goku and Vegeta have just enjoyed the great meal prepared by Chi-Chi, and after that they decided it was finally time to continue their journey. They bid farewell to their friends from Earth, teleporting to planet Namek with instant transmission. After the explosion, a massive hole is created in that area. Piccolo, who is standing and already back to his normal size, reflects that if he hadn't taken this guy to this dimension, the planet would have been destroyed by that attack. Piccolo approaches Cumber, who is lying in the center of the crater. He has returned to his human form since the artificial moon was destroyed in that explosion. When Piccolo approaches, Cumber gets up. The Namekian tells him that he fought very well, but it's time to give up once and for all. But Cumber laughs at this and says that he's far from giving up. At that moment, he transforms into a Super Saiyan, but it's not just the regular Super Saiyan, it's the Super Saiyan enhanced by Kaioken by 100 times. Piccolo is very surprised by this saying that this guy's power has increased tremendously. Cumber starts laughing and says that Piccolo hasn't seen anything of his power yet. Feeling the incredible power of this Saiyan, Piccolo says that in his current form, he won't even come close to defeating him. So it's time to go to the next level. What do you mean the next level, Cumber asks. And then the legendary warrior of Namek reveals, everything you've seen so far has been my power as a mortal. But from now on, I'm going to show you the true power of the Namekian god. After saying this, Piccolo begins to concentrate a tremendous amount of power in the form of light, and this light spreads throughout the surroundings, even temporarily blinding Cumber. When we can see him again, Cumber beholds a completely magnificent sight, the final form of the legendary warrior who possesses the power of the great dragon god, Zalama. Back on Earth, Goku and Vegeta have just finished enjoying a great meal prepared by Chi-Chi. After bidding farewell to Yamcha, Young Master Roshi, and Krillin, they use instant transmission to travel to planet Namek in order to gather the Dragon Balls and uncover what's happening to them. However, when they arrive at the location where they expect the planet to be, they find nothing but empty space. Goku and Vegeta are left frustrated with Goku speculating that the same thing happened when they tried to find planet Vegeta. Vegeta deduces that Namek in this reality must be in a different location, or might not not even exist. They contemplate how to find Namek until Goku has an idea. They can use the Dragon Balls from Planet Serial to uncover the truth. Vegeta likes the idea and they use instant transmission once again. On Namek, Cumber emits a black and red aura, an incredibly intense aura of Super Saiyan power multiplied a hundred times by the Kaioken. On the other side, Piccolo emanates the radiant aura of the Namekian God's power, a magically graceful yet extremely menacing force. As Piccolo faces Cumber, he senses an overwhelming ferocity in this warrior, a thirst for blood and violence unlike anything he's ever encountered. In contrast, Cumber notices the Namekian God's profound serenity and an air of overwhelming superiority, as if he were facing a true giant. As the Namekian God gazes at him, Cumber sweats profusely. His breathing becomes heavier, and his muscles tense involuntarily. The Saiyan is in terror. Enough! Cumber roars, releasing an even denser aura of energy. I won't let you oppress me, Namekian. It seems there's no other choice, the Namekian says. Cumber takes the initiative, propelling himself towards Piccolo like a bullet. He throws a punch that Piccolo blocks, who senses his tremendous force and recognizes his power. However, it's Cumber who feels the real impact when Piccolo counters with a punch that shatters Cumber's block and lands in his abdomen. Despite this, the Saiyan resists and counterattacks, initiating an exchange of frenzied blows with Piccolo. The two combatants begin to move at a speed of millions of times greater than the speed of light, going around planet Namek several times in milliseconds and leaving hundreds of gigantic craters all over the planet. 
But the place they are in is not the real planet Namek. They are in a parallel dimension that Piccolo took them to so they could fight without worry. During the exchange of blows, Cumber finds himself at a disadvantage and decides to shift to an energy-based confrontation. He creates a massive sphere of power and hurls it at Piccolo, who responds with an energy wave that pierces Cumber's power sphere, striking him and exploding in the Saiyan's body. Cumber withstands the attack, but it distracts him enough for Piccolo to break through his guard with a powerful knee strike to the stomach, leaving Cumber in agony. Cumber attempts to counter with an elbow strike, but Piccolo grabs his elbow and retaliates with a rib-crushing punch, causing Cumber to double over in pain before receiving a kick that sends him crashing into the ground. After that, Piccolo concentrates a high amount of power in one of his hands and releases a powerful energy wave at Cumber. This attack would surely have the power to completely destroy Cumber, but to Piccolo's surprise, it is deflected. The reason for this is that Cumber has elevated his power, now using Super Saiyan 2 with the Kaioken. After deflecting Piccolo's attack, Super Saiyan 2 Cumber advances against Piccolo with a series of blows. Now things are not easy for Piccolo, who has more difficulty defending and counter-attacking. Even though Cumber has increased his power, the Namekian God still manages to excel, landing a powerful hook to Cumber's abdomen, causing him to double over once more. Piccolo then moves to Cumber's back to unleash an energy sphere that would surely inflict a lot of damage. However, the Saiyan surprises everyone by having two extra arms emerge from his back. With one arm, he deflects Piccolo's energy, while with the other, he retaliates with a burst of power that Piccolo has to fend off. Cumber then returns to the attack, this time with two extra arms to assist him. They exchange even more frenzied blows until Cumber manages to use his extra arms to hold Piccolo's arms and deliver a series of punches with the other two arms. However, this doesn't last long as the protector of Namek reacts by firing a beam from his antennas that electrocutes Cumber and forces him to let go. Then follows up with a point-blank energy wave that sends Cumber plummeting from the sky, severely scorched. Furious, Cumber retracts his two extra arms, returning them to his body, and then uses the Taioken creating an intense flash of light that disrupts Piccolo's vision. After doing this, Cumber advances to attack, but to his surprise, Piccolo launches a flying kick that not only catches the Saiyan off guard, but also inflicts significant pain. Following this attack, a sequence of several other powerful and rapid strikes, punishing the entire body of the malevolent Saiyan with multiple forceful blows. Cumber asks how Piccolo is fighting so effectively, even without his eyes, and Piccolo responds by saying that his powers go far beyond the five senses. Enraged at receiving so many attacks, Cumber unleashes his full power all at once, pushing Piccolo away. He then multiplies into three clones. With his vision now restored, Piccolo notes that Cumber has some peculiar abilities, but this one in particular he can replicate. Piccolo also multiplies into three, and triple battle on Suze in the skies, and on the ground of Namek. Thanks to instant transmission, Goku and Vegeta arrive on planet Serial, or at least where the planet should be. Once again, all they find is the empty void of space. Goku and Vegeta become even more frustrated as nothing seems to go their way. Suddenly, Goku comes up with another idea. Vegeta asks what his new idea is, and Goku suggests that they should go talk to King Kai, as he usually knows things. Vegeta likes the idea, and they use instant transmission once again. Fortunately, King Kai's planet is in the right place, but when they arrive, they don't find him there. Goku and Vegeta are surprised by this, as according to Goku, King Kai is always on his planet, along with Gregory and Bubbles. However, there's one person who might know what's happening with King Kai, King Yemma. But when they arrive at King Yemma's palace, they face another surprise. He's not there either. To make matters worse, there's an incredibly long queue of souls, both inside and outside the palace. Goku and Vegeta see some ogres trying to control the unruly crowd of souls, while the ogre guide desperately speaks to the megaphone, attempting to calm everyone down. Goku and Vegeta approach the guide, asking what's happening and where King Kai and King Yemma are. The ogre guide responds saying that all the gods have hidden from the god killer, and he doesn't know where they are. Vegeta becomes very irritated by this and calls the gods a bunch of cowards. Goku says they now need to figure out how to find them. The triple battle between Piccolo's clones and Cumber's clones continues. The six warriors fiercely face off, each demonstrating their determination and incredible power. The six fighters soared through the skies, exchanging devastating blows that created shockwaves and left a trail of destruction wherever they went. 
One of Piccolo's clones concentrated energy in his hands and unleashed a powerful energy beam at one of Cumber's clones, forcing him to retreat. However, Cumber's clones were not willing to be defeated so easily. They used their multiplication abilities to confuse Piccolo's clones, creating illusions of themselves and attacking from unexpected angles. One of Cumber's clones sees the distraction caused by his illusions to launch a massive energy sphere towards one of Piccolo's clones. The Piccolo clone about to be hit by the energy sphere maximized his energy and launched an even more powerful defensive attack, dissolving Cumber's sphere and sending a shockwave that pushed back the other clones of Cumber. As the battle continued, Piccolo's clones demonstrated incredible agility and the ability to anticipate their opponent's movements. They effortlessly dodged the attacks of Cumber's clones and countered with precise strikes. Cumber's clones were starting to get exhausted, while Piccolo's clones maintained their composure. One of Piccolo's clones fired an energy beam that hit one of Cumber's clones directly, considerably weakening him. Another Piccolo clone noticed an opening in the defense of one of Cumber's clones, and swiftly advanced, delivering a powerful punch to the evil Saiyan's chest. The impact caused the Cumber clone to stagger and fall to the ground. The third Piccolo and the third Cumber engaged in intense and violent exchanges in the skies until Piccolo prevailed, throwing Cumber to the ground along with the other two clones that had already been knocked down by the other two Piccolos. The last Piccolo, likely the original, concentrated a massive amount of energy in his hands and fired a powerful wave of power at the Cumbers. The resulting explosion was spectacular, enveloping the trio of Saiyans in intense light. When the light dissipated, all the Cumbers were severely injured and weakened, seemingly unable to continue the fight. Seeing that the triple battle was over, Piccolo dispelled his clones and then told Cumber that the fight had ended. But at that moment, Cumber started laughing and said that it was far from over. The two clones of Cumber began to dissipate, disappearing in clouds of black and red smoke. Then they merged back with the original Cumber, who suddenly began emitting an extremely massive amount of power. Piccolo was greatly impressed, noting that the power Cumber was now emanating was incomparably greater than what he had shown before. As the entire dimension began to tremble and the walls of their reality started to crack, Cumber unleashed his power while revealing an even larger mane of hair. Now displaying a Super Saiyan 3 form multiplied by a hundred times through the Kaioken, Piccolo asked how he achieved such a sudden and insane power increase. Cumber told him that every time his body is severely injured, when he recovers, he experiences a significant power boost called Zenkai. What had just happened was that Piccolo had hurt him and his two clones badly, and when they merged back into him, they had tripled the Zenkai boost. Piccolo was very irritated by this and realized that he would have to be extremely cautious during the fight. The next time he inflicts significant damage on the Saiyan, it has to be definitive. Emanating this extremely monstrous power, Cumber attacks again. But to his surprise, when he attacked, Piccolo blocked. The Namekian god said that the Saiyan may have elevated his power even further, but he still hadn't used his maximum. In hell, King Kai and King Yema were having a very apprehensive conversation when suddenly Goku and Vegeta arrived using instant transmission, startling them both, who recognized them as Saiyans. However, upon closer inspection, King Kai was relieved because he recognized them as the two who faced Cumber on Earth. Goku and Vegeta were surprised to discover that King Kai had been observing what happened on Earth and asked if he knew the truth about them and what was happening. But King Kai said they didn't have time to think about it now since Cumber was still on the loose and he needed them to deal with the evil Saiyan. Goku and Vegeta asked what he was talking about. Vegeta was sure that he had completely destroyed Cumber on Earth, but King Kai told him that wasn't true, and that in fact the one Vegeta faced on Earth was a clone of Cumber, which only had a quarter of his power. That left the two of them in complete shock. But upon further thought, Goku remembers that Cumber copied the Kaioken from Tien, so he could have copied the quadruple technique as well. Vegeta is completely impressed by this since that guy was ridiculously powerful, and to think that he was only using a quarter of his power is completely absurd. King Kai says, that's not all, and he tells them that Cumber became even stronger after that battle and learned the abilities of those three Earth warriors because of the time his energy possessed them. Goku says that this is very bad because now he knows the Ultra Instinct too, but Vegeta says this is much worse because he may have learned the Shinken too. However, King Kai reassures Vegeta saying that Cumber definitely did not learn his abilities, as Vegeta completely destroyed the energy that possessed him, so that energy didn't return to Cumber to give him that knowledge. Goku asks who the heck this Cumber guy is, and how he came to be. King Kai says he will tell them. In a parallel dimension on Namek, the most intense battle that Planet has ever seen was happening. Throughout the planet, shockwaves could be seen shaking both the planet's structure and the walls of that reality. 
While exchanging blows with Cumber, Piccolo is very concerned because this dimension will soon give way, and if it collapses, their battle will destroy Namek in an instant. In fact, this dimension should have been destroyed a long time ago due to the destructive power of their battle. And it has only not happened yet because Piccolo is constantly using his magical power to reinforce this dimension. But as Kamba raises his power, it becomes increasingly difficult to fight him and keep that dimension intact at the same time. Seeing a gap in Namekian's guard, Kamba lands a punch so powerful in the middle of Piccolo's chest that it simply goes through Piccolo's body. But using a very strange ability, Piccolo simply changes the shape of his body into a serpentine form, transforming into a kind of dragon and wrapping himself around Cumber's body. But Cumber begins to emanate his Saiyan power intensely, causing his fiery aura to burn Piccolo's body and make him let go. When Piccolo moves away while suffering from the burns and returns to his normal form, Cumber makes a black energy claw appear and launches it at Piccolo, who has already healed and dodges it, but sees an entire mountain behind him being split by this claw. The Namekian responds to this attack by extending his arm towards Cumber while making his arm transform into a dragon. With his serpentine body twisting through the air, the dragon arm reaches out for the Saiyan, attempting to bite him. Cumber dodges that attack, but it was just the first of many from the dragon, who chases the Saiyan in the air while trying to catch him, but without success thanks to the evil warrior's dodges. But Piccolo uses his magical power to make several other dragons come out of his arm, as if they were branches branching from a tree. Cumber dodges as best he can, but ends up being grabbed by one of these dragons, and is then grabbed and trapped by the others, until the bigger one swallows him completely. After swallowing Cumber with his dragon arm, Piccolo touches him with his other arm that maintains a normal appearance. When he does this, the dragon arm starts to experience an energy overload, and then an absolutely massive explosion occurs in the dragon's mouth. After receiving such a powerful attack, Cumber is severely wounded, but still very eager to fight. Emanating even more power, he heads towards Piccolo without any fear and the physical confrontation resumes. In Hell, the story of the god killer Cumber was told by the Northern Kai. In the beginning, the Saiyan race was not essentially evil. Of course, Saiyans maintained their warrior essence. But despite that, they had a certain degree of civility. The Saiyan king named Yamoshi was a very powerful man, but he was also very wise and even kind by Saiyan standards. But Yamoshi had a brother named Cumber, and this brother of the king was born with a very peculiar characteristic. He had completely malevolent energy that consumed his heart with wickedness. This energy, despite its evil nature, seemed to have a certain degree of its own will, as it had the ability not only to consume Cumber, but also other people. It didn't take long for Cumber to realize that this energy also had a certain learning ability, and when it took hold of a person's body, it could learn their techniques. Yamoshi was alerted to the danger his brother represented, but he was not cold-hearted enough to kill his own brother, so he decided to imprison him for many years. But after many years of imprisonment, Cumber somehow managed to free himself and then corrupted the hearts of the Saiyans with his energy, organizing a revolt against King Yamoshi and his men. The war was very balanced and thousands of extremely severe battles occurred all over the planet. But since Cumber had the ability to infect other Saiyans with his energy, he and his men ended up gaining the majority and prevailed against Yamoshi's men. The king in a last act of resistance managed with the help of his five most loyal soldiers to transform into something called the Super Saiyan God. With this power, he managed to defeat thousands of Cumber soldiers and even came very close to defeating his brother in battle. But Yamoshi lost this power and was eventually defeated. After defeating his brother, Cumber became the king of the Saiyans and initiated a campaign of destruction throughout the universe. After a long time, Cumber eventually learned about the gods and decided that he didn't want to destroy just mortals, but the gods as well. Then he did everything possible to grow stronger. When the god of destruction Beerus woke up from his long slumber and discovered what was happening in Universe 7, he went after Cumber to destroy him. But not even the god of destruction could defeat the evil Saiyan and ended up dying. After killing Beerus the Destroyer, Cumber only grew stronger, beginning his campaign to assassinate all the gods of destruction. The more he fights, the stronger Cumber becomes, and the further away the dream of defeating him gets. But there's one thing that bothers Vegeta a lot. He asks King Kai how Cumber manages to become so powerful. Vegeta understands that Saiyans have a great capacity for evolution, and Cumber seems to be one of them. But from their battle on Earth, Cumber doesn't seem to be like Brawly, for example, who evolves constantly and uncontrollably. So he wants to know how this guy became so powerful to the point of defeating Beerus and the other gods of destruction. The battle between the Namekian god and the god killer reaches its climax, with countless electric bursts generated from the collision of their blows and destroying the surrounding environment. 
Piccolo and Cumber exchange intense attacks as the barrier of that reality comes closer to breaking. As they fight, Cumber starts to feel his body in excruciating pain. The reason for this is that using Super Saiyan 3 with a hundredfold Kaioken has its price. Piccolo, on the other hand, is not doing so well either because fighting using all that power and still keeping that dimension intact is not easy. But despite the exhaustion, they don't ease up on the pressure in the fight, with each collision of blows generating a great impact explosion, proving the colossal power of these two titans representing the Saiyan and Namekian races. But the Namekian god takes the lead, beginning to press Cumber with his attacks while shouting to vent his great fatigue and agony. Piccolo's attacks begin to land. Face, chest, abdomen, arms, legs. Cumber's entire body is struck by extremely powerful blows. Now the advantage of the Namekian god is very evident, and the fight seems to be heading towards an ending. But Cumber won't accept that. Damn it, I won't lose to you. The God Killer releases his power in an uncontrolled aura of energy and pushes Piccolo away with a punch. After doing this, Cumber concentrates all his power into a massive energy sphere, saying that with this attack, he will destroy Piccolo, this dimension, and even the real planet Namek. But Piccolo doesn't intend to let that happen and concentrates a powerful special beam cannon on his forehead. The attacks are launched and collide. At first, balance is maintained. However, soon Piccolo begins to gain the upper hand. But Cumber is willing to take it to the end, and then he shouts, Kaioken multiplied by 200. As his muscles stretch to their limit and his skin starts tearing, spewing blood, the Saiyan emanates an aura of power twice as large, while his energy sphere doubles in size. Faced with this, Piccolo's special beam cannon retreats, and the Namekian god begins to be heavily pressured. Piccolo sees defeat right in front of him, but he can't let that happen because if he's defeated, Namek and the Namekians will be completely wiped out. Faced with this impasse, he makes a decision, and then the Namekian god screams while emanating all his power. What? Cumber exclaims as he sees the enemy's energy beam advancing again against his attack. How can this be? To the complete shock of the Saiyan, the thin energy beam pierces his massive power spear. Seeing the energy beam coming towards him, Cumber thinks about dodging, but can't because of the destruction of his muscles caused by the Kaioken. His chest is penetrated by the energy, which after piercing him, destroys him. Next, the massive malevolent power sphere explodes, destroying the entire dimension. Part of the explosion also occurs in the real dimension of planet Namek, creating a spectacle of light, dust, and destruction in a very significant portion of the planet's surface. When all that is over, in the center of a large crater is Piccolo, who has returned to his base form and is extremely injured with only half of his body intact. Piccolo couldn't fully defend himself from the explosion because he was too weakened and used a large part of his remaining power to try to make the other dimension resist as long as possible before collapsing. But it was thanks to the resilience of that dimension that most of the explosion was contained there, saving Namek from destruction. The Namekian god smiles, happy that he managed to save his planet in the end. However, when he takes a good look at the sky, Piccolo realizes that it's completely dark, and that can only mean one thing, Orunga has been summoned. As soon as Piccolo realizes this, the sky brightens again, which means that the Dragon Balls have been dispersed. And right after that, in the very next second, someone comes flying at an incredible speed and lands nearby. That someone is Cumber. Piccolo asks how this happened and says that he's sure he killed him and left no trace of his body. But the Saiyan smiles and reveals that his technique wasn't to triplicate his body as Piccolo saw, but to quadruplicate it. When he hears this, Piccolo despairs. So it was a clone all along? Cumber confirms and explains that while Piccolo was distracted with his clone in another dimension, he took the opportunity to search for the Dragon Balls, and in the meantime wiped out everyone on the planet, except for the Grand Elder Guru, of course, as he needed him alive to use the Dragon Balls. But Cumber takes care of that very quickly, aiming in a specific direction and launching an energy sphere. The sphere hits the Guru's house and completely destroys both the house and him. After doing this, Cumber taunts Piccolo saying that he failed as the guardian of Namek, but then he praises him saying that the legend of the great Namekian god is real, and he was truly amazing fighting against his clone, which had most of his power, while also maintaining that dimension. He even says that if Piccolo hadn't tried to keep that dimension intact to protect the planet, he might have won. After saying this to Piccolo, Cumber reaches out to him and releases his malevolent energy, which begins to envelope Piccolo's body. He asks what Cumber is doing, and Cumber responds by saying that he will make the Namekian god his servant, and will also copy his abilities. Piccolo tries to resist the control of the malevolent energy, but he realizes that with the little power he has left, he won't be able to do so. However, he won't accept it and starts accumulating the remaining energy, saying that if he can't defeat Cumber anymore, he'll at least thwart his plan. Realizing what was about to happen, Cumber flies away immediately, and in a very next second, Namek is completely destroyed. From space, Cumber watches the explosion from which he narrowly escaped. What a pity. It would be great to have the powers of the legendary Namekian god, Cumber says to himself. 
But it doesn't matter. In the end, I will still be the supreme being of the entire multiverse. Back in hell, Vegeta questions King Kai about how Cumber managed to gain so much power in such a short time. King Kai explains that Cumber achieved this thanks to a special Saiyan ability called Zenkai, which allows him to evolve whenever he receives a mortal wound. And after so many evolutions, Cumber became extremely powerful. Vegeta argues that even though he evolved so much with Zenkai, he needs to recover somehow to be able to evolve. And he asks how Cumber managed to do that while fighting a god of destruction. King Kai is about to answer his question, but suddenly their conversation is interrupted when a voice calls for them, a voice that Goku and Vegeta know very well. Mr. Goku, Mr. Vegeta, I would like to speak to you. The one making this call is the Grand Minister, who says that he has a very urgent matter to discuss with the two of them, and they must go to the Lord Zeno's palace immediately. Of course, this sudden call leaves Goku and Vegeta very surprised. Planet Cumber At the center of the evil Saiyan homeworld stands the castle of King Cumber. Two beams of light approach this castle, heading towards it at high speed. In the main hall of the castle, Cumber is seated on his grand throne, surrounded by some bodyguards who belong to the elite Saiyans of his planet. Those two beams of light break through the ceiling of the room, landing on the hall floor with the debris of the roof falling around them. The two invaders are Goku and Vegeta. The king's guards all rush toward them, emanating Cumber's evil energy, which has surely amplified their common power, which was certainly not low to begin with. But for old Goku and God Vegeta, this is nothing. Goku in a moment that takes a fraction of a second knocks out all the Saiyan guards attacking him, leaving them unconscious on the ground without even understanding how they were attacked. Vegeta, on the other hand, simply lets himself be surrounded by the enemies. And then, when they all attack simultaneously, he releases his energy of destruction in the form of a small whirlwind of destructive power, which instantly turns all those soldiers into dust. After dealing with the guards, Goku and Vegeta start walking towards Cumber, who remains seated on his throne. While watching their approach, Cumber says he expected nothing less from them and was eager to see them again. Vegeta tells him to stop acting so relaxed, because he knows his destruction has arrived and this time it won't be like the last. On the other side, Goku tells the king of the evil Saiyans that his ambitions end today. Kumber laughs and says, that's what they'll see. At that moment, Goku and Vegeta are surprised when several holes start appearing in the ceiling of the wall, and the people who cause these breaches land around them. In total, they are surrounded by 12 creatures, all looking closely at who these 12 beings that just arrived are, Goku and Vegeta. Besides being completely surprised, realize that dealing with this will be a big problem. To understand all of this, let's see what happened about an hour ago. In the Palace of the Almighty, the atmosphere is very tense. Zeno is sitting on his throne, looking a bit worried, while his bodyguards around him are sweating, clearly nervous. In front of them is Daishinkin, who has a very serious expression. Goku and Vegeta arrive at the location using instant transmission, and when they do, Zeno is taken aback, while the guards immediately move in front of him to protect the Supreme God. But Daishinkin calms everyone down, saying that they are the benevolent Saiyans he mentioned. Goku and Vegeta are quite intrigued by this, and they never imagined they would see Zeno so frightened. Daishinkin still maintains his calm and polite demeanor, thanking the two for responding to his call. But they notice that even Daishinkin, the person who always seems so detached from everything due to his superiority, is worried about something. Vegeta gets straight to the point, asking why Daishinkin called him there, and how he knows who they are. Daishinkin says he doesn't know exactly who they are, but he saw what happened on planet Earth and how Vegeta confronted Cumber. Goku asks if the Grand Priest has been keeping an eye on them all this time, and he responds by saying that ever since the events that occurred on Earth, yes. He says he was keeping an eye on Cumber, so as a consequence he ended up seeing the two of them as well. The Supreme Angel also mentions that he was completely impressed when he saw the power of Goku and Vegeta especially Vegeta's power, who somehow knows how to use Shinken. Dai Shinken says that when he saw the two of them fight, he became very curious about them. As aside from being two Saiyans who are not under Cumber's control, they are also extremely powerful and have achieved an ability that almost no one in the multiverse has managed to attain. Impatient, Vegeta gets straight to the point again asking Dai Shinken what he wants and why he called him there. Dai Shinken can't help but comment on how impatient Vegeta is, but he doesn't think that's a bad thing especially because the matter is really urgent. He then decides to give a direct answer saying that he called him there because of Cumber. Obviously, Daishinkan explains that since they faced Cumber on Earth, he has been keeping an eye on them as well and has somewhat understood their situation. The Grand Prix says that they can make a deal. 
If Goku and Vegeta defeat Cumber, he will help them return to the reality they belong to. Of course, this leaves Goku and Vegeta very surprised and excited at the same time. Goku asks if Daishinkan really knows what's happening to them and requests an explanation. But the angel says that first they must deal with Cumber, and then they can have what they want. Goku and Vegeta agrees but mentions that they want to know exactly who this Cumber is and how he became so powerful. They learned some things about him while talking to King Kai, but Daishinkan interrupted the conversation and they didn't fully understand everything. Daishinkan explains to them that everything the North Kai talked about was correct. Cumber is an evil Saiyan who many years ago managed to rule over his race. He was born with a very special condition and mastered a very eccentric energy that can control the hearts of others and learn from those who possess it. Daishinkan tells them that Cumber had the desire to completely dominate the entire universe, and leading the evil Saiyans, he embarked on a universal domination campaign, massacring numerous planets. In his travels, he discovered the existence of various universes and many gods much stronger than himself, which motivated him even further. However, knowing that he was very weak compared to the deities he wanted to surpass, Cumber realized that he needed a lot of time to become strong enough to face these gods. From that moment on, he began the search for the secret of immortality. After extensive research, he learned about the Dragon Balls and asked to become immortal, so he would have time to train and gain enough experience to confront the gods. The Dragon Balls that Cumber found belonged to a random part of Universe 7, where a Namekian lived. Through this Namekian, he discovered there were also orbs on Namek, but he never dared to attack Namek because it was home to a being known as the Namekian God, a Namekian warrior who inherited a portion of the power of the great god Zalama one of the strongest beings in all of existence. Cumber continued his journey until he also learned about the existence of the Grand Zeno and wanted to somehow become immune to his powers. The evil Saiyan eventually discovered the Super Dragon Balls, found a way to locate these orbs, summon Super Shenron and make his wish. Cumber's wish was to become immune to even the most destructive abilities in the multiverse, including Zeno's ability to erase anything from existence. In this way, Cumber became immune to both the power of the God of Destruction and Zeno's abilities. Vegeta asks why Cumber didn't simply wish to become the supreme being of the universe, as that is his goal. Daishinkan says that indeed he could have done that, but it seems he didn't want to become the strongest being so easily. Cumber wants to be the strongest through his own efforts, climbing every step by facing and defeating all his enemies. Vegeta says he understands that mentality and recognizes that Cumber is a true Saiyan after all. Daishinkan explains that since Cumber had no intention of making any more wishes to Super Shenron and didn't want anyone to make a wish that would harm him, he simply destroyed the Super Dragon Balls. Beerus, the god of destruction of Universe 7, had been sleeping for many years. When he woke up, he discovered that a Saiyan was causing massive destruction in his universe, so he decided to destroy the Saiyan. When Beerus faced Cumber, he was superior in overall power. But the fact that he simply couldn't destroy Cumber made his victory almost impossible. To make matters worse, Cumber kept getting stronger throughout the fight. Whether from the most severe injuries Beerus inflicted or from his great ability to learn while fighting. In the end, Beerus was defeated, and after that, Cumber felt much more confident in facing the other gods, beginning a campaign to annihilate the gods of destruction. Goku asked how many gods Cumber has already killed so far. Daishinkan responds that recently, all that remained have been killed. Goku asks what Cumber is going to do now that all the gods of destruction are dead. Daishinkan replies by saying that his next target is certainly Zeno. And that's what's got him so worried. Goku asks if Zeno is unable to defend himself. Daishinkan explains that Zeno is not a fighter, and all his power is confined to his sovereign ability to erase all things. But if Cumber is unaffected by that, there's nothing he can do to defend against the Saiyan. Vegeta asks why Daishinkan himself doesn't defend Zeno. Daishinkan says that an angel cannot directly involve in a battle, and that includes him. Goku then asks about Zeno's bodyguards and whether they are not capable of defending him. Daishinkan says that the guards of the Almighty are very strong, but he's not sure if they can defeat Cumber. Even if they can, it's a battle everyone wants to avoid, and that's why he needs Goku and Vegeta's help. After explaining all this, Daishinkan asks if they accept this mission. Goku and Vegeta find it amusing when the angel asks this, as it's obvious that they won't refuse to fight against this extremely powerful guy. Daishinkan smiles when he hears this and says that's what he wanted to hear. So the Grand Priest seals the deal. If Goku and Vegeta defeat Cumber, he will help them return to their reality. After the deal is sealed, Goku and Vegeta ask where they can find Cumber, and Daishinkan replies by saying that at this moment, he's on his planet called Planet Cumber. This is the same planet that he took from Yamoshi many years ago, through the war that North Kai told him about. Daishinkan says he will send them there right away. Using his magical powers, Daishinkan simply teleports Goku and Vegeta from there. 
When the two Saiyans are no longer there, Zeno asks worriedly if Daishinkan really thinks they will be able to defeat Cumber. Daishinkan responds by saying that except for him, the other three most powerful beings in the multiverse and some angels, those two are the only ones who can defeat Cumber. After Daishinkan teleports them, Goku and Vegeta appear on planet Cumber. As soon as they set foot on the planet, they feel a very bad sensation, as if the air on the planet is heavier. Vegeta deduces that this bad feeling is certainly due to Cumber's evil energy, which is completely imbued in that place. Eager to fight, Goku suggests that they go and meet Cumber right away, and says that this time, he will be the one to face this guy, as Vegeta has already fought him once. But to their surprise, in a very short time, a veritable army of Saiyans approaches and surrounds the two of them. The Saiyans are all dominated by Cumber's evil energy. Vegeta says that this is a waste of time and that he wanted to go straight to find Cumber, but Goku says they have no choice. As if they don't defeat these Saiyans, they will hinder the battle against Cumber. Goku and Vegeta surround themselves with a thin layer of energy with the goal of not being touched by the evil energy surrounding these Saiyans. Afterward, they command everyone to come at them. The first one tries to attack Vegeta, but before he even gets close to the Hakaishin, he is hit by a wave of energy that disintegrates him, and then several dozens of warriors behind him. After that, Goku goes like a rocket toward a group of Saiyans, hitting them like a rampaging elephant, throwing the Saiyans into the air by the dozens. Some guys try to surround him and hit him from all sides, but Goku dodges all of them simultaneously with a leap and then throws an energy sphere in their midst, which when it explodes, scatters them in all directions. Other guys catch up to him in the sky and attempt various attacks, but Goku easily dodges all of them and then knocks them all out in the blink of an eye. A group of Saiyans advances against Vegeta who explodes all of them with several spheres of ki. Until when one of them hits him with a blow, the Saiyan prince holds his hand, touches his body with the other hand, and hits him with a big bang attack. The Saiyan is charged by the ki sphere, which then explodes in the middle of a group disintegrating dozens of warriors. After that, Vegeta sees a group of Saiyans joining forces to launch a coordinated attack against him, a very powerful energy wave that comes toward the Hakaishin. However, he responds with a small sphere of destructive energy that turns the enemy's energy into nothing as it advances and explodes, making them all disappear from existence. Saiyan soldiers fall from the sky in dozens, knocked out by Goku who, as he's attacked by the men, dodges and knocks them out with a single blow. A Saiyan who appears to be more powerful than most forms, a massive energy sphere and launches it at Goku. Seeing this as an opportunity, he forms a Kienzan and throws it at the energy sphere, which is simply cut in half by the disc. But Goku manipulates the disc against the power sphere, repeating this process several times, cutting that massive sphere into smaller pieces. After doing this, Goku waits for those various smaller energy portions to reach him, and using his psychic energy, he hurls those small slices of energy at the other soldiers, causing multiple explosions in the area, and taking several Saiyan warriors out of combat. When an enemy tries to hit him with a flying kick, Vegeta grabs the guy's leg and starts spinning him in a way that hits and pushes away all the Saiyans who are about to attack, using one man to take down Ten and then launches him at another guy who was approaching. The next one to attack Vegeta is a Saiyan who is much larger than the others, but even this guy with a much stronger appearance sees his big hand break when hitting the chest of the God of Destruction. Vegeta counters with a punch that simply shatters the man's teeth. After that, he inserts a small flake of destructive energy into the guy's mouth and throws him at a group of soldiers. A large explosion occurs inside the big guy, extending to the surroundings and also killing dozens of other warriors. Goku complains to Vegeta saying he doesn't need to kill so many of them, but Vegeta says that his job as a god of destruction is to eliminate everything harmful to the balance of the universe, and this is certainly the case with these Saiyans. The next to attack Vegeta has his leg broken upon hitting the Hakaishin's face and then is pierced through the chest by his hand and is simply undone by the power of destruction. Goku forms a Sokidan in his hand and then launches and manipulates the energy sphere to simply hit a bunch of Saiyan soldiers coming from all around him. As they are hit by the energy sphere, the enemies fall from the sky in masses. Goku finishes the attack by launching the sphere at a larger Saiyan, carrying with him two other soldiers who were behind him. From the sky, Vegeta makes a rain of key blasts fall against a group of Saiyans who are destroyed in multiple explosions. A group of Saiyans advance with a grab, trying to hold a god of destruction, but they are quickly expelled when Vegeta explodes his energy, destroying them, and then attacks with a Gallic gun to sweep another group of soldiers that approaches from the front. Surrounded by multiple enemies, Goku uses the Taioken to blind them all, and before they recover their vision, they are completely knocked out by the old Saiyan. 
After that, Goku creates his giant key avatar and using the giant's hands, sweeps dozens of Saiyans from the sky and the ground with powerful slaps. While strangling two Saiyans, one with each hand, Vegeta tells Goku that dealing with these guys is a waste of time. I'll deal with these guys in a second. Kakarot, step aside. Even though he imagines what Vegeta would do and doesn't like it, Goku moves away with teleportation after dismissing the giant. With Goku away, Vegeta quickly concentrates his power and after accumulating enough energy, he uses his final explosion, creating a massive explosion that, in a single instant, wipes the Saiyan army out of existence. After the technique ends, Goku approaches Vegeta saying, it's a pity that all those people died this way. But Vegeta says that the death of those Saiyans certainly means the salvation of trillions of lives in the future. Looking at the castle at the center of the planet, Vegeta flies toward it, and Goku does the same. As they approach the castle, some guards around the building go toward them with bloodlust and no regard for life. A group of soldiers flies towards Vegeta while firing a barrage of key blasts. But the God of Destruction simply surrounds his body with destructive energy and moves toward the soldiers as the energy attacks dissolve when they touch his aura. When the moment of collision between Vegeta and these men arrives, the soldiers simply explode. But Vegeta remains unharmed, continuing his flight as if nothing had happened. The other group comes toward Goku, who also heads toward them without any hesitation. As they start to approach, the soldiers begin to emit an even larger amount of energy, drastically increasing their speed to collide with Goku with extreme force. But to their utter frustration, Goku simply points his hand at them and makes them disappear. The Saiyans reappear in space, flying toward a passing meteor, with which they collide and explode. With the guards out of the way, Goku and Vegeta proceed freely toward the castle. In the main hall of the castle, Cumber is sitting on his large throne, surrounded by some bodyguards, who belong to the elite Saiyans of his planet. By this point, he already knows what happened to the entire army of the planet, and he laughs, saying that he had already imagined that those worms would never be able to stop those two. But it's always fun to see a massacre, even when it comes to his own people. The castle's roof is breached as the two invaders land on the ground. It's Goku and Vegeta. The king's guards all move toward them, attacking without any fear. In a moment that takes a fraction of a second, Goku knocks out all the Saiyan guards, who attack him, rendering them all unconscious on the ground without even understanding how they were attacked. Vegeta, on the other hand, simply allows himself to be surrounded by the enemies, and then when they all attack at the same time, he releases his energy of destruction in the form of a small whirlwind of power of destruction, which instantly turns all those soldiers into dust. After taking care of the guards, Goku and Vegeta start walking through the hall toward Cumber, who remains seated on his throne as he watches their approach. Cumber says he expected nothing less from them and that he was looking forward to seeing them again. Vegeta tells him to stop acting so calm as he knows his destruction has arrived, and this time it won't be like the last. On the other hand, Goku tells the king of the evil Saiyans that his ambitions come to an end today. Cumber laughs and says that's what they'll see. At this moment, Goku and Vegeta are surprised when several holes start appearing in the hall's roof, and the people who cause these breaches land around them. In total, they are surrounded by 12 creatures, and looking closely at those 12 beings that have just arrived, Goku and Vegeta, besides being completely surprised, realize that dealing with this is going to be a big problem. Those who have just arrived are simply the gods of destruction, surrounded by Cumber's evil aura, looking at them with an extremely voracious expression. <laughs>